I'm really fan of sugar cubes. Yeah. That's how you put <laughs> sugar in your coffee. Nothing better than sugar cubes. Yeah, that could be your sponsor. I feel Some like sugar, sugar cube cubes company. require a bit more stirring, though, than just, like, uncubed sugar. Just because, like, they're okay. kind of... Are you, are you... Dude, we're, we're trying to get the sugar cube sponsors. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sugar Wouldn't the cubes. sugar cube sponsor be the same as the... I'm sure people who make cubed sugar also make uncubed sugar. I'm sure they just have, like... The sugar gets put to being cubed, and the sugar doesn't get cubed. <laughs> no, I don't think so. It's, like, probably, it's probably a very uh, cutthroat unless unless business. Uh, unless other sugar is like more cubable than other. Welcome to episode 61 of Path to Cube. I'm Kevin. And I'm Fernando. How's it going this week, Fernando? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm well as well. Back so, to the old intro, I see. Yeah. Well, you know, classic. Don't want to don't wanna change it up. I'll let, I'll let change come naturally. So, yeah, we'll, see where, we'll see where the it takes us. The internet doesn't like change. What are you talking about? The We're internet changes the internet. all the time. Yeah, and they don't like it. You know, they, actually, to be fair, the internet changes... Probably more often than any other industry. Yeah. And, but and but then it's like it's like the next change. Facebook, you know, update to their layout. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, I opt out of this well, well, by making a status. I opt mean, out like of Reddit? this. Reddit. Do you use old Reddit or new Reddit? I still use old Reddit. Yeah, new Reddit sucks. Yeah, but they're becoming a social media. Yeah, basically, because now now it's like too. about the you can follow like people's co- like. Wait, you follow people now. I think so, and then you can have their posts show up on your front page. So what's gonna take? What's gonna be the new Reddit? We're we gonna have a new Reddit. We'll go back to Dig. Tells Dig. Dig dot com. What is Dig dot com? D i g g. I don't know. It used to be like the old like aggregate of like links and shit. Or maybe you go you... to a website that's just aggregate of link and like no comments. Yeah, that'd be nice. Like I don't want to use Reddit. Like I think I think the, I go the trouble Reddit, with Reddit. Where else to go? The trouble with Reddit is that. The, like, the fact that you have numbers in karma, I think, is bad. You should just have, Isn't like... Isn't that to motivate people to post stuff? Yeah, but you should just have color. You shouldn't give people numbers. You should like, give people, like, green, yellow, and red. And if you're red, that means you're low. If you're yellow, no, it means... No, then it's still the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, but at least it's not numbers, and people aren't, like, whoring out for numbers. But do you care if people are... Like, here's the thing. Aren't you... If you go to Reddit just for the news... Do you even care about But why news? do you go to Reddit for news? Because it's always you biased. You can just no, go to news sites. No, not the news. You, I just, what do you, you mean can news go, sites? You can go so to biased. like, I don't know, BBC's all right. Wait, no, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Like CNN. I'm talking about strict, like news on the communities. Like I, I like Magic. I like League of Legends. I think I, I think, go to those Reddits. It's the think, only Reddits I go to. I think message boards and forums. No, you can't, man. Forums Those, can handle about like 200 people. After 200 yeah. people, there's just too many people. Yeah. And then they suck. Yeah. So we'll go find forms. Hopefully your topics are niche enough that only 200 people are actively discussing it no, but at like, one time. Because people want come and go, go, right? Because like on forums, you community. could have like, that's a 200 active users at, like, you know, at one time. And that's a pretty healthy community. But you could have like, you know, 25 new. And then they always like, there's always like a fresh yeah, there's always opinions coming in. But there's just as many leaving. And you maybe uh, have like a few core. Yeah, you like, need way more than 200 for that to, to maintain that rate. Because if you're if you only have two hundred people, how, what's your rate of people leaving and going? Twenty five a month? That's ludicrous. I don't know. Anyways. No, but like my point's just I just want news on my community, not general news. I'm talking about like oh, okay. strictly I, hobby I'm... news, like magic and lol, essentially. Yeah. And that's what I want. But like yeah. I don't I don't want to go to Wizards because that doesn't. That would be I can't navigate biased. their website. Yeah, and like I don't I don't I don't want that. I just want yeah. I just want to know what's going on, you know. Know what the current drama is, so I can be like, "Oh my god, these people are so dumb." <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Anyways, let's 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 start off with our cube car spotlight because that's always fun, and I love my cube car spotlight. Okay, I'll let you go first then. Yes, I picked Lupine Prototype. This is a two mana five five. Artifact two mana. Colorless. It costs color. Just two colorless. Any any and it's any a two wolf mana will construct. do. Yeah, it's a five five. It can't attack or block unless a player has no cards in their hand. Wait, it's a player. It's a player. I never knew that. Yeah. Has so that if ever your opponent, come up? no. <laughs> okay. But if your opponent has no cards in hand, it can attack and block. It, but more, 
importantly, if you have no Couldn't cards in hand. Couldn't they just play whatever their card is in the second Discard game? your hand? Oh, the, the one with nothing. The black no, no, no. card. So not, I, one I, with nothing, and it says, you discard your hand. I, yeah, that, no, stop. stop. Play stop. play this on turn two. Stop. Turn three, one with nothing. And then attack for five. Stop. Okay, that's not what you should be doing with this card in cube. But um, if your cube supports like a madness or a hellbent theme, then this card is bonkers in it. This is a card is so much fun because it comes down on turn two, and then on turn three, you're basically, how do I lose my hand as fast as possible? And and that is such a fun well, way to play Well, usually you don't play it on turn two. Usually you play some discard outlet on yeah. turn two, and this card comes down on turn three or turn four. But it gives you a huge amount of tempo, right? Yeah. Because like, when you do play it on turn three and four, you're still doing other shit, yeah. right? And it like, gets... Imagine if you play Uno's Prowler, turn two, Swing, then play this on turn three. Discard a Fury Tempers, Lightning Bolt, something. Yeah, you're getting then, a huge amount of value. And you swing in like, and then next turn you could probably get rid of your hand because you get a Unus Prowler. Yeah, yeah. So, so I love this card because, to me, a personal pet like archetype that I love to play. I think is, our listeners know that by now. Is Madness, Hellbent, Agro type type archetypes. I think they know. So that. play, you know, Fiery Tempers. Play the Lupine Prototypes. Play like Unus Prowlers. Play things with like discard outlets. Are you talking about Tibble? And Tybalt, you got to play your two mana planeswalker. It's a two mana planeswalker. So you, it is the best two mana planeswalker. So the thing I love about this archetype, to go off on a tangent, is like your value is like it's like aggro value, but you think like discarding cards, like since you're getting value off the discard because you have madness, or when you discard a card, your cards get pumped, and you can play things like like Howling Mine or like things where you draw extra cards a turn, but you're trying to like oh avaricious dragon. Yeah, we play with. Um, so you're trying to play these types of effects where you can just just kind of draw cards and just dump them as soon as possible, and you're getting this this value off the discard that is just outracing your opponent who's like getting value off drawing cards or getting more cards. So you're kind of getting like one and a half to two cards per card because you get value playing the card and discarding it, whereas most people would think of it as a detriment to discard. And I think it's a really fun way to like shake up how how aggro plays in your cube if if you're kind of tired of like you know goblin guide into you know with zergo and you know jackal pup and, and just playing these kind of boring you know under costed creatures like this is just a a fun way to you know to be fair lupine prototype isn't under costed creatures it is a two man with, with a significant <laughs> downside yeah but the and the the reason why we picked that card is because in most cubes you it's cannot. pretty hard to like embed a whole madness yeah, it, it, it does get really tough to to incorporate this into a into a cube list, especially with like discard madness because you acquire like you know discard outlets and madness cards. So it's an A B mechanic which takes up a lot of room in your cube. We've talked about early on in our in our podcast about A B mechanics and how much design space that takes up. So you really have to love it, and it does take a significant portion of your cube. Or you can just have a modular cube. Yeah, and that is our main topic. And that's why I chose this card, because we're going to talk about why a modular cube will support a card like Lupine Prototype and way how, nicer yep. than a 360, 540, or 720 regular cube. Yep. Essentially, we figured out that um, we uh, we never we talk about a modular We did two episodes on modular cube. We talked about their benefit. We talked about their downside. talked about all that. But we never actually talked about building one and like how to start it. Yeah. Because it is quite an undertaking. And it's cards like lupine prototype that kind of make you want to build a modular cube yes, and make it worth it because yeah. you can go deep and so before we start i'll talk about my card yeah and my card is just like that it's a confiscation coupe so confiscation coupe is a three blue blue is yes. it a creature or an artifact artifact or it's artifact or creature right i think so yes. yeah so uh choose target artifact or creature uh or actually technically you, you gain the four energy first so you yep. gain four energy then it's Choose target artifact creature, then pay as much mana energy as that converted mana cost, and you gain control of the of the uh, artifact or creature you chose. Right, yes. so it's a mind control. That's what we call it, right? Yeah, when mind creature, control. Yeah, mind slaver is the player control. Yeah, so mind control for five mana, but you can only control four mana unless you have support. Yeah, other energy outlets that you yeah. know. If you have more energy before, then you can potentially steal like five, six, seven, eight. And that's what I like it is that I like mind control effects. But I do think that at four, five, especially four, four is just busted. Mm -hmm. But five, it's a little bit really powerful, especially for us, because you are going, you're essentially paying five to steal their best thing. Mm -hmm. And 
so you're up a card because then they have to remove it. So you two for one them, right? Because essentially you want they you they got zero for one because you mm-hmm. played your thing, they lost their thing, and you have their thing. So it's yeah. really good. Um, now in cube, it's less punishing because you have like enchantment yeah. removal more often. But even then, it's still really good. And yeah. so I like this one because you have to work for it. What you need is for you to really abuse it. You really want to get their five, six, seven drops. And for you to do that, you have to make energy. Yeah. And energy is another thing that is super hard to uh, support because yeah. like. You don't want four attune with aethers in your 360 list. Yeah, and if you're running like a singleton regular cube, like that, you can't even have four attune with aethers. I know, and you'll you'll just like have to spend so many like cards having mediocre energy, kind of yep. cards that like you can be like I can just put a more interesting card than you know a two mana bear that comes in with two energy that can spend energy to get bigger like Feldar. Like yep. what is it, Feldar? No, Feldar Cub. Is, is that the Feldar Cub? No, yeah. Feldar Cub is the sacrifice yeah. to kill an enchantment. It's a uh, Tusk yeah. blade. No, Tusk color. No, it's something with Tusk. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, the 2-2, two, two, when, when it hits, you get two energy, yeah. and you can play two ener- one energy to give it... No, yeah, two, two energy, energy to put, to put, one, put one, one counter on. Counter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's okay, yeah. but like... He he's also not, needs he, support too, and he doesn't make most lists because he's too yeah. weak. And he on doesn't. His own. He kind of eats his own energy. It's not yeah. something like a tune that generates yeah. a, a no, or like Wood Weaver's Puzzle Knot that generates it, or yeah. a Rogue Refiner stuff yeah. like that. So confiscation coup back to the card you picked. It like it works really well when you have this kind of this this plethora of other energy cards that can feed into it. Yep. And then you get some really cool, um, you know, plays when you have more than four energy versus reading it as five mana. Gain control of someone with convert mana cost four or less. Yeah, like this just um, this just has way not, more. Play it's not to the it. biggest payoff. Like I think yeah. uh, either works Marvel and Dynavo Tower yeah. are more fun cards that yeah, are also. More but I think did we more. do either works Marvel? I think so. I think we did. I forgot to yeah. check our list, but uh, but I do like Confiscation Coop, so I wanted to bring out Confiscation Coop. Yeah, and uh, and that's where it shines in modular cubes, just like Lupine. Like we have yeah. an energy module. It's super fun. Yeah. Uh, it has gone through some iterations because we didn't get it right yeah. the first time, but um, but it works really well. Mm-hmm. And we would never play energy if it wasn't for that. And yeah. how many sets would we need more energy? Like especially now that we have single yeah. block sets, like a yeah. set is a block. Like next time we go to Ixalan, which they're gonna reserve energy just for Ixalan. You mean That's Kaladesh? Obvious. Thank you. Yes, I mean Kaladesh. Um, it's gonna be just Kaladesh. So we're never gonna see energy unless we go back to Kaladesh. Period. Like there's no way. Uh, now we could see it through commander that would be kind of cool an energy commander yeah so man this is genius like if now i'm going to be disappointed look they're going to announce the commanders i think in one or two weeks yeah. july 12th i think yep so uh what day is it today the 29th yes so today is the 29th. this is going to come out on the 31st First? yeah so no, two one. weeks from this yeah. coming out uh they're going to announce the themes now bro if it's not energy now i'm going to be disappointed can you imagine an energy planeswalker or like Ooh. not an energy planeswalker, but an energy legendary creature that like generates, and then you could have like energy c- c- cards, and you can have new energy cards. Yeah, that'd be cool. This would be so much fun. Ah, I'm willing to bet it's not gonna be that. But yeah. anyways, unless it comes <laughs> through that, or it comes through some like alternate limited set like Battle Bond, we're gonna see it in Kaladesh. We're never gonna, and then next time we come to it, we're gonna have one set's worth, and it still won't be enough for a 360 card list. To have powerful yeah. energy cards, yeah. right? And it'd be such a huge cost to yeah. your cube like, to for you to, to have an artifact it. cube. Like we've already been to Kaladesh, we've been to Scars of Mirrodin, we've been to Mirrodin block. Like that's three blocks yeah. that focus solely, and these are modern blocks, so they have powerful cards. And that barely makes a a good energy a good artifact cube, mm-hmm. right? And like you have some older stuff if you want to go older, but like you could have a decent artifact module. But look how many sets we have. Like that's mm-hmm. nine set or eight sets that I just listed, right? Um, and so for energy, we would have to wait until we have like three large sets until mm-hmm. we have enough to be a, a powerful cards for a three sixty list with with the uh, with the modular cube because we have low, we can keep things at a lower power. You get a whole module. You get forty yeah. cards. You can play things like the land. What's the land called? Uh, tune no Aether Hub. Either hub, yeah. So, anyways, we've already said the pro- the benefits before. So let's go on yeah. about so, our main topic, which is starting your own module cube. Yeah. So explain uh, how we're so bad at uh, social media. We okay. totally first of all, cube tutor is not social media. I think we were on a streak of answering our Twitter pretty well, pretty yeah. fast. I was like, I was answering as soon as they came, more or less. Yeah. 
Uh, it turns out, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cube Tutor has a message function. Um, so <laughs> of all I the mean, functions like Cube Tutor could that, have. Yeah. So apparently, right on top of where your name is, there's like a little envelope, and apparently that had a one for like three weeks, and I never yeah. noticed. So yesterday, no, not yes, two days ago, I noticed that. So I clicked on it, and I was like, "Huh." So a user by the name of uh, Blackfishy, but it's black without the C, so yeah. it's B A L B L A K, and then Fishy F I S H Y. Yes. Um, yeah, it's written right there. Hello, Blackfishy. Yeah. Hello, Blackfishy. Sorry, we took so long to answer. And uh, yeah, so I didn't know that existed. So he asked. He wanted. He said that he was going to convert. He wanted to convert his cube to a modular cube. And then I realized, wait a second, we never actually talked about how to make one. We always talked about, oh, look how cool it is. Like we just went yeah. on for five minutes. We talked minutes about what's good about, about it. We so talked cool. about like the downsides. Yes. But we never actually talked about how to start one. Yes. And how to mm-hmm. work on one. So today's episode is solely focused on either creating a new one from scratch or, or taking your cube and converting, and converting it. it. Now we're going to do taking it from scratch and then we're going to go into detail. And a lot of the start taking your own, all the taking, uh, like all the one from converting your own applies to the starting from scratch. So yes. just because you have one, don't ignore that whole section because that's where we're going to go into detail about stuff. And then really, there's only a few minor tweaks. Mm-hmm. So most of the stuff is, even though we're starting with starting from scratch, as soon as it goes like how to make a module, then it's like, well, that's irrelevant whether you're starting from scratch or you're not. So like, it's it's a little bit of both and we're just going to at the end cover some slight differences. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so let's talk about starting from scratch. Yeah. Some of the unique parts. Yeah. So I know if you listen to any of our set reviews, we always talk about you know, power cube, semi-power cube, like, you know, unpowered and, and different very power levels in your cube. And if you're going to make a modular cube, um, you have to know what you want the power of that cube to be um, because that kind of limits how many modules you have and and what you can do. And, and generally what we found is you need to have a lower power or a weaker power in mind because that allows way more possibilities. Like we talked about with a cube card spot, like confiscation queue and energy mm-hmm. kind of theme yep. or a lupine prototype, a hellbent, um, you know, madness discard theme. Um, like these are weak power levels. Like you'd never pick a lupine prototype in, in a, if, if black yeah, Lotus so much and, and moxes discard. are running around and ancestral recalls, you just, you just discard just, it would have to never... be like, like all of black and red and yeah. would have to be focused on like emptying your hand and stuff. It would be a yeah. really weird cube. Yeah. And it just, it just wouldn't work. And you, and, and basically lots of these, these kind of niche kind of archetypes that we see in lots of these limited formats that are really fun to play. Just don't see playing cubes because you're restricted too weak. by your power, like how many of the powerful yeah. cards. So for energy, like we have 40 card yeah. modules, so you need to pick 40 energy cards. Yes. So whatever the average power level in those cards are, that has to be your cube's power level. And that's what we aim for. Now, when you think of a power level, make sure that you think about the, like, what is the most cards? Not the bombs, because we always advocate for bombs. We've made episodes before, I think, where we talked about bombs. Bombs are good, right? Like, for example, I think, like, Snapcaster Mage is a borderline bomb in our format. Maybe it is even a bomb, just because mm-hmm. the amount of value it produces, right? Now, in most cubes, Snapcaster is just a good value creature, right? Um, I think another, Jace Vrince Prodigy is definitely a bomb, mm-hmm. right? Now... We're okay with it because there's benefits and when we've gone on before. So don't think about the top. That's not your power level. Your power level is the medium, you know? Yes. It's like, what's the meat of the cube? And not the worst cards. For example, like, you know, you have Sigil the Empty Throne. We love to... That's unplayable with no enchantments. Unbelievably amazing in a deck with 22 other enchantments, right? It's like yeah. your best card. Now it's a giant bomb. So like, that's also a card that's not doesn't really have a power level, right? That's very complicated. And, and that's the kind of card that you only know if it fits in your cube, whether like after trials and being like, okay, how often is the, this 22 enchantment deck? How mm-hmm. many times? In a regular draft, how many enchantments does the sigil have? 15, let's say. Okay, is that too powerful? Is that too weak? And then that's how you have to balance. Those are very complicated. So think about the meat of your cube. You know, these are cards like you just said, the cub from energy, right? That's yeah. going to be the meat, you know? For us, we have... Plenty of cards there to meet. Like uh, in enchantments, you have cards like um, what's the uh, Blood Knight? I think yeah. it's called the three two that gets plus one plus one of life. If you control an enchantment and yes. it gets life link, and it's like yeah, that's a, that's an okay card. It's pretty good in its limited yeah. set. Or you get right? like uh, drawn as emissary. If you have drawn as emissary, game, thank that's you. That's like you know three mana, one Orzov for a two two flyer that you know drains for one. Yeah, that's yeah. like 
our definition of like a C minus. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, you'll play it. Well, if you care about the life gain or if you have like, you need but that's like kind of like the, that's like part of the, the meat of the cube though. It's yeah. like these kind of not really heroes of limited, but like limited. They were kinda, really good. Yeah. yeah. But what I mean, like kind of like if you think about if a card was like an uncommon in a limited set, I that think was like very playable. Slime foot is a good example in this yeah. set. Yeah. From or maybe Dominaria, it's already yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So you put slime foot in like, that's like, a power that's like a good meat and potatoes card it's not insanely overpowered but like if that's your power level that's like kind of perfect yeah for a modular or uh, what's the you just we were just talking about it the one one that kicked creates four one ones uh um, sapling migration sapling migration yeah another one that's like it's a staple of yeah. dominaria draft yeah it's not busted but that's, but that's where we sit. But it won't make most cube lists because yeah. there's better things you can and do. As but... a result, we have 54 modules and counting. Right? <laughs> it's getting right? a bit out of hand. Yeah. Um, at 54, we still haven't like mm -hmm. reintroduced the unmodules since yeah. we took out those cards because we want to have yeah. online eventually. Yeah. Uh, so like, But let's say we went really powerful. Well, if you're doing a powered cube, you can't make a powered modular cube because there's already not even 360 cards to put into a powered cube yeah. that like really encapsulates the power. Like if you start to split, it just becomes more and more bomb heavy as it like depends whether you open the one and two super yeah. powerful cards of each module, it just won't work. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you got to pick, you got to have your, you know, envision your power level before you begin, because yeah. it's super hard to make changes to power level after, because yeah. let's say you make 10 modules or 16, right? Cause then, let's say 16 modules in a core. If your power level was wrong and you're like, man, I need to take out power level. You need to change 16 modules. That is a huge undertaking, right? Yeah, and lots of people don't want to do that because it's just so much work. you've already done it, yeah. You've already made them and you're happy with them. And, and don't... then you have to decide, you either cut these cards or you got to be like, hey, so are we going to spread them out and make them into more bombs, mm -hmm. right? Like we spread a lot of our bombs out, but we also took a lot of cards out, right? Like Bremass keeps coming in and out because we keep unsure. Oh, it's too powerful. No, it's not. It's too powerful. No, it's not. It's just a good bomb. It's powerful. And so on, right? And so you don't want to have like a hundred of these. Yes. And uh, before you start picking like different archetypes and themes, because that's the really fun part, but before any of that is started, um, we always say we have a core set, a core module, which is played in every um, draft we do. Um, and to exp like that's just basically, you know, a set of cards that is in every, that, yeah, we'll be in every list and we pick the different modules that accompany this core set. Mm -hmm. And this core set basically helps um, kind of grease the wheels on all your other modules. They kind of give kind of the the backbone of, of magic. Yep. It's like gives you your, your staples, yep. staples removal, counter spells, um, draw spells, board wipes, um, kind of signature magic-y things that yep. helps facilitate and, all. Yeah, archetypes. and what that means is like, if your core is in every, think about it in terms of Asfen, right? Like how many removals each drafter has? If you put zero removals in your course, in your core, and your core is one pack out of three, right? So your mm -hmm. core is one third of your cube. So you have packs of 15, that means each module is 30 cards. Well, if you have zero removal in your core, then that means that you have to put enough removal that every drafter has enough, right? Because it's cube, we want a lot yeah. of removals. Let's say you want eight per drafter. Okay, that's reasonable. Um, that means every module needs eight pieces of removal because you didn't put in your core. Now, if you put, let's say, two removals per drafter in your in your core, that means now each module only needs six because the two are already there, right? Mm -hmm. So if the more removal you put in your core, the less you need in your modules, right? Yeah. The more, you know, uh, board wipes you put in your core, the less you need your modules. Yeah. Now, obviously, for example, something like board wipe, you have a, a, a push and pull because like the more board wipes you have in your core, that means the more board wipes you don't need in your module, but it also means that the less your modules can be creature based because you have yes. more, more, right? So you, you also have that yeah, balance that. by moving the board wipes to your m modules. It means that you can control more. Oh, okay. this module is really dependent on creatures. I'm just not going to put a board wipe because that's going to help a little bit the Asphan and then maybe, right? Th that deck is a little bit more playable. Oh, that deck's too good. Let me add a board wipe. Sweet. Yeah. It, it, it kind of allows you to fine tune a module within itself, yes. right? Oh, this module, too much removal because this, this these cards are just not being played because they're too yeah. weak if there's too much removal. Okay, yeah. pull back on the right. For example, Heroic Auras, mm -hmm. right? We like to play with Heroic Auras. Very mm -hmm. fun module, surprisingly viable. And it actually doesn't have as many removals as, for example, let's say something like Instant Sorceries. Yes. Well, Instant Sorcery is trying to push creatureless control decks. Yeah. Heroic Auras trying to push... Putting creature. auras on creatures. Well, guess what? 
a lot of removal doesn't help that, right? You want to have fewer removal. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the module just has less removal. So when that module's in the draft, there's slightly less removal per drafter, which means that that, that module, that, you know, heroic cards get a little bit better, right? It gets you a little bit of fine mm -hmm. tuning. Yeah, and also in these, uh, like, uh, these core module, um, you, you include support cards. Like, so not necessarily just removal spells, kind of, not necessarily just instant sorcery, kind of your bread and butter of, of uh, yeah. limited magic. Also, like, cards that help, like, facilitate Many the majority modules. of your yeah. modules. So, for example, um, we use, like, J Baby Jay's Friends Prodigy. Um, why? It's like a merfolk looter. It has draws a card, discard a card, so it helps filter, helps, helps make your decks more consistent. Helps madness. Helps control. It helps control. It helps. Uh, it even helps aggro. Yeah. Then it flips, and then what? It casts instant sorcery, so it helps the instant sorcery yeah. decks. Uh, it helps uh, control the top of your library, so it works with, for example, cards like miracles. It lets you dump them out. That's mm -hmm. a big module for us, right? It just turns out when you look at all the modules containing blue, let's say even you're playing zombies, right? Mm -hmm. Well, zombie, we have a zombie module. Yeah. You can make zo you know zombie based aggro. Well, what does Jace do? It lets you. You draw a card, then you discard a grave caller, then you cast a grave caller. <gasps> That's amazing. Yeah. And then you, maybe the turn before you set up a prize the amalgam in there, right? And then you cast grave it's, crawler. Yeah, it's out amazing. Of your and then and when then... it flips, maybe you can cast Dark Salvation off the ulti, right? And oh, also you can play a creatureless control deck where Jace is your win con. So it helps control decks. And then when you flip, you just tick him up until you ulti, and then you just win the game. Because yeah. his ultimate just wins the game, period. It's like insane. Yeah. Um and so like He's really clutch. And then yeah. I, another, your favorite card. Yep, Bow of Nylia. That's just the uh, green enchantment that um, gives your attacking creatures death touch. And it also has four different things you can choose from yep. by paying two mana and tapping it. You can like put 1-1 one, one counters on creatures. Okay, that helps 1-1 one, one strategies and so, counter, counter strategies. Yep, and like if you have proliferate module, that's yep. perfect. If you have... You know, so death touch? Plus oh, one, no, plus what's, one. what does it do? Two damage to... To target creature with flying. So that helps answer... Yep flying creatures yeah that's it, just an answer card it's kind of like green removal it can gain you three life life gain module yeah and control decks that need yep. life or it can uh put four cards from your graveyard into your library that actually is surprisingly useful in dredge decks because yeah. those decks actually mill themselves out quite a <laughs> yeah so it's just like sometimes you just want to put like four cards that actually don't do anything in your module mm -hmm. it's like if you all dredge decks for us usually care about like creature and lands so it's like you just, sometimes you just have instants and sorceries and you're like, you know what? I don't want to mill myself. So you just put four in the bottom and it's just like instant sorceries that you have no value in. Um, and then also attacking creatures of death touch. Any green based aggro deck will take yeah, advantage of that. That, that kind of hits a board stall. You play this and you're like, hey, look, now I can trade favorably. Yeah. You can't just like. And then what else is it? It's a legendary enchantment artifact. Okay, well, we have a legendary module. Yeah. We have an enchantment module and we have four artifact modules. Yeah. I think that works really well with all yeah. those. So I, I want to go on a limb and say this is probably my favorite cube card. Both of Nally, I don't, I don't think I've been... More than Tybalt? I think I've more than Tybalt, yeah. yeah I, I like this yeah. card before we, we I like Tybalt. We just like to obsess about Tybalt. I think Tybalt. we just like Tybalt because of the debates that we have yes, about Tybalt. Yes, we like Tybalt we don't know whether it's good them. or not. It's good. Yes, yeah. we do. We're going to stick by our word. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, another one that uh, I think has been very clutch in our is, is uh, Talia, Guardian of Thraben. It's yeah, just that, really it's kinda, good. In it's a good hate bear card. and. And it just helps, like, you know, mid range or, or something deal with aggro or deal with control or yeah. It helps deal with these strategies that kind of like there's not really a card that does it better than kind of just like a generic hate bear yes. card. And, and the thing is, if you put her in only one module, okay. So how many aggressive mm -hmm. white, you know, aggressive modules containing white that push white aggro? Well, there's a lot of them. If we put Tali in one of them. Well, then it can only show up once whenever that module is in there. If we put it in the core, it helps all of those strategies. So it, it turns out it's just a clutch strategy, clutch card in a lot of different strategies. Mm -hmm. So it just it just ends up doing a, a lot of support. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, go for it. I was going to talk about uh, putting putting uh, lands and, and fixing into your mm -hmm. into your core. This is a great spot to put your fixing because then it kind of dictates kind of the level of. Uh, like multicolor or monocolor, two color, three color decks yep. you want in your in your uh, modular cube, because um, this will be in every draft. So um, if you put in like you know a cycle of fetch lands and chalk lands, which is like pretty good, you get like people going mostly two color decks, splashing for a third. Um, or you could like put like you know filter lands. You could put you could put wit 
so many different different yeah and it really pushes because like if you put like their cubes like the difference between fetch like if you take four cycles of lands and it's fetch fetch shock shock man you put fetch fetch shock shock and you're pushing like what i, I could say that four to six drafters can be three plus color mm -hmm. and if you put like filter pain buddy fast yeah as your cycles that is completely different yeah right that is a huge difference now you might have like way like four three color decks or you could just play flat shock like we only put flat shock yeah and as a result our modules have to contain more lands and yeah. i think the the big the big benefit of that is actually that you actually get to put more like utility um, dual utility lands. Dual, utility lands so like we like the modules are a great fit for utility lands utility lands are so hard to fit in cubes because cubes are so cutthroat right yeah you and, really have to justify like and really lots of utility lands are either like useless except I, for the one archetype i think a great example is kabira crossroads so kabira crossroad is enters tapped when it enters the battlefield you gain two life and it taps for white yeah that's shit right like you're never it's yeah. never gonna make a cube list even if life gains a theme it's just not deep good enough, enough. yeah for no us, one's gonna pick that it just goes in the module and then a lot of life gain decks just get that for just free pick it up yeah yeah and like you never would want to kill the design space if you only had 360 cards with module, it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll sacrifice one card in the Out of 40. Phase. It'll and see then, play. Yeah. And, oh, shoot, I don't get to run this other awesome card that maybe mm -hmm. has life gain. That's fine. Maybe it's also yeah. an enchantment and it fits in enchantments. Maybe yeah. it's, like, something else and it fits in. Maybe it's a human, so it goes into human. Like, yeah. it's easy to fit that somewhere else. Yeah. So you wouldn't really put these utility lines in your core. You'd save the core more for, like, how you Fixing, want to dictate. Yeah. Do you want three-color decks? Do you want two-color decks? Do you want, like, very little fixing and force people to go two-color decks? Yeah, and um, if you pick the number, it's actually pretty easy to change, right? Lands are pretty easy to change because it's like maybe you pick like, oh, I want fetch, fetch, shock. And you try that out and it just doesn't work. And it's like, okay, fine. I'll take out the fetch, the, one of the fetch cycles and put in a shock cycle. So now I have fetch, shock, shock. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that didn't work. Fetch, shock, filter. And you can, it's really easy to play with that. Now it's mm -hmm. much harder to play with like adding a whole 10 because then you got to take 10 mm -hmm. cards out of your module. But playing with the cycle themselves once yeah. it's in, it's really easy. And I mean, we heavily suggest Fetch Shock. Fetch Shock's just awesome. Yeah, it's And good... if you want more, then the more you put in, again, the less you need in the modules. So it's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you might be asking, like, how big do we make these modules? Okay, well, that's entirely up to you. The only thing to note is the bigger the module, the, uh, the sorry, the, the core. How big do you make the core? Which also affects how big you make the modules, but whatever. Uh, the, the smaller the core, the more card variety you will have in each draft. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the core the less generic support you'll need, the more you, so let's say your, your modules are, or your core is like two packs, mm -hmm. right? And then you want eight modules per draft. So that means each draft is 15 cards or each module is 15 cards. Well, all of a sudden now, if you're doing a life gain module, well, 15 cards is like super easy, right? You really get to delve down. Now you might have issues then because it's like, oh, am I even going to have enough 15, enough life gain? So by having smaller modules, you might kill modules. Like 15 mod our life gain might be really hard, right? Because you just don't have enough life gain cards for multiple drafters to want mm -hmm. them. And then it might all end up in one and then it just becomes a deck, right? You put in 50 cards, they're all life gain. It's like Karlov and all this stuff, Eile. And then, well, only one player gets it. Because there's not, if I pick Karlov, they, you know, the, all their drafters don't really have a reason to pick the life gain cards. So mm -hmm. I just get them all and then it just becomes a deck and becomes really boring. So you got to play, you got to really think, okay, we need big enough for the modules I want to be interested in. So that means the more focused they are, the more space you want, because you really want competition still, right? Mm. And and then, but you also want big enough for the core to pick up the removal weight and the board wipe weight and all this stuff, right? So for us, we do uh, eight card or eight cards per player of a core, so sixty four cards, and then forty card modules. And yep. our packs have sixteen cards instead of fifteen because that drafts twice. better. Yeah, it just there's no reason why you have to stick to fifteen. That's just because wizards make packs of fifteen. Yeah. Like, just put 16, and then it wheels twice perfectly. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do half a pack per person of core, and one, uh, two and a half packs module, and then one module per person. If you want to make mm -hmm. modules that are, you know, four modules per draft, and each draft, if modules are 80 cards, of course you could do that, right? But the yeah. smaller you make your, mo like, the more modules per draft, the more variety each draft yeah. will have. But, I mean, also the more uh, kind of keep in mind that the more modules you have, the more kind of, paperwork and maintenance yes. you add yes so i know lots of people will just be like well i have like kind of like kind of four modules and you plug in two each time you want and then maybe like you can kind of split those yeah. and, and, and slowly think... kind of divide out into more more niche modules 
So what do you think would be the best way to start it? Would you I, would you want someone to take like if they're starting from scratch? Let's say they're starting from scratch, yeah. they don't have a cube. Yeah. Would you recommend kind of like go into some really niche modules and have like smaller sets, or would you say only have a couple modules and see how that plays and no, tune I think no, deeper? I think I think you have to start with your desired module size right away. Yeah. I think that you'd have to like if you want two modules per draft, then you that's what you're gonna have and very rarely you're gonna break that, right? And there's benefits. For example, we have like three different graveyard modules. If our if our modules were three times as big, we just have one, and yeah. all that would work together, right? Um, and we have five different art, artifact modules, and so like you can make it into two maybe. But I think that sweet spot is half to one pack per person is the core, mm -hmm. and then two to two and a half packs a module, and then eight modules per draft. Like yeah. I think you don't want to introduce more than eight. Like maybe ten, but I think per pack per person is a nice way to think about it. Yeah. But I think you want to hover between six to ten modules per draft because you also want variety. That's that's one of the huge aspects. Yeah, you don't want to just play it, like right? other cube. If you only have two one modules, or version two. Yeah, it's gonna be like let's say you have six modules, then that, you really don't have a lot of Basically you have like two cubes with some overlap cards. And you wanna see in different like for us, it's really exciting because when we're playing the human module you never think about how does the human module interact Ooh. with the spirits module, for example. Is there yeah. overlap? Is there not? Is there a niche? Yeah. And then, but one time you're just going to have that draft. And so you just end up, oh, look, I found this spirit card that really works. And really it's going to sharpen your card evaluation skills because yeah. you get these, you yeah. never really think about it. Because like, look, I thought I was drafting this cool humans deck, mm -hmm. but then these spirits pop up. So maybe yeah. you end up in a hybrid or, yeah. you know, maybe instead of two tribes, maybe it's like uh, you're thinking of humans and dredge or some well yeah. those aren't the same colors uh uh give me a second equipment right so now you're like oh wait a second there's all these equipment cards that would work really well with my champion the parish and stuff mm -hmm. and then these cards that matter about equipment are also humans cool and th so you can start building that together you, mm -hmm. you never think about that because that only comes up when those two modules get put together mm -hmm. and next draft well odds are they're not going to get put together again and if they are well then there's going to be other modules in that draft that get they weren't there before like i think we did the math once and i think with even like only 40 some modules when you do 40 choose like 43 choose set eight you're like at 50 million or something mm -hmm. right like at f we're at 54 and even if you just do 20 like 20 choose eight is yeah. still a gigantic number you're never gonna play all those yeah, possibilities and, and that's the thing like your your pick orders like with, with a regular 360 Usually the pick order gets found out by your play group, and it's kind of like, well, you should probably take at least it, for the be first few picks. Yeah, yeah, is like you should probably look for these cards. If these aren't in your pack, you know. And the decks start become stale. Like the decks just end up starting looking the same, right? Yeah. So this one slightly changes it because when you have different modules, you don't know. Like maybe this card's like when you have two modules combined, like all of a sudden some sleeper card becomes like this becomes like twice as good, and yeah. it should be in the first four picks. You should take it versus middle of the pack. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of keeps it interesting and you never really solve the format cause you're constantly yeah. changing. And, yeah, how yeah exactly. Plays. Your card of, and then like, and then like, and so, and so maybe you're like, you're talking about, we have a life gain is in, and you're in this deck that cares about life gain. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you're not going to get all the life gain cards cause they work with all the other stuff mm -hmm. too. And they're also just powerful on their own. So they're going to get spread out. You're not going to get, you're not going to always, Oh, I, I'm drafting life gain. So now I just get this life gain. No, no, no. You're going to have to use cards from other modules too because no one's going to let you get all the cards that gain life because they are also working mm -hmm. other decks. Like Archangel of Thun, that's not going to wield. That's a powerful card on its own. Yeah, it works better, but like just because you draft a Karlov does not mean you're going to get all the life gain cards. You're going to have 23 cards that care about life gain yeah. and or have life gain triggers. That's not it or, or gain life. Yeah. Um, you're going to get maybe 10, right? And those 10 are going to be the same every time. So what's the other 23 of your cards? Well, maybe you have six, seven, eight core cards that aren't land. Well, what's the rest? Well, the rest is just whatever you open, right? Yeah. If there was an angels, demons, and dragons module, maybe it's an angel. Maybe it's a dragon. Maybe you have other crap. Maybe it was zombies and you made this white, black zombie gain life deck that only comes together sometimes when those two modules are in. So it ends up getting this whole fresh, right? But I think I think we're delving too much into the benefits. Yeah. Um, last thing we have to say about core is don't forget to put in your generic good cards too, because like you're just gonna have to have some good cards in there that really tie. Yeah. Like I think Snapcaster Mages are a good example. It's just yeah. that's in our core. It works in many decks. It offers a ton of gameplay. Yeah. Vendillion Click, or please. Like Birds of Paradise. 
Birds of Paradise. Yeah, it's some yeah. ramp we didn't talk about. Yeah, yeah. ramp is really important because you don't want to put a mana dork in every green module. Yeah. So you put one mo- mana dork in, in the, the core. Well, that's one yeah. less mana dork. Or to like put a little with Cobra or something. Yeah. Um, and they're just they're just really good. I, I mean, if you're playing Vendillion Click, put that that belongs in your core. That card offers so much gameplay. It's so awesome. And it fits in many different archetypes, right? Yeah. Even a, a, a control deck might want a Vanilla Click. It's like, oh, I want to counter your spell. In return, Vanilla Click you. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, right? You get to see their information. It works everywhere. But it also works in a Negro deck. You know, draw step, flash in Vanilla Click. Now I'm going to start beating you with it. Um, so moving on to some some modules. Now you want to build some modules. Yeah, so this is kind of the fun part. So after you kind of have your core, put your kind of realize what you want to see in every draft, what makes a good limited environment limited, um, now you got to pick your archetypes and this is kind of like similar to picking your archetypes for a regular cube. You kind of pick things that you think are fun, Yeah. but it's even greater because you can, you don't have to try to balance it with the super high power. Cause you're trying to get like a, a good kind of limited environment. Yes. That's well, you'll, you'll have, for. you'll have your power band yeah. in mind. Yeah. So whatever that's in mind, you'll know how, you know how to evaluate cards. Yeah. You're a cube designer. You've seen thousands of cards. You're going to have to pick around there so like obviously if your power level is higher yeah. maybe heroics auras won't work for you yeah. so for example like a cube pro spotlight i might like have played a played a game where lupine prototype i'm like i love this card i wish i could put this in cube and you're like great i can just devote a module i don't yeah. have to play it every time because i don't want to become stagnant yeah. by playing this really kind of deck that kind of i don't know might not have the replayability if you put it in an entire cube i'll make that a module i'll make it a, a module built around a lupine prototype or, or at least that uses it it doesn't yes. have to be like this is the core card of everything ties everything yeah. together it could just be like this card I, needs to be pickable yes i want play drafters to value this card and it to be reasonably good yes well what do we do we put it in madness hellbent aggro yeah what it, what does lupine prototype scream discard your hand get rid of your hand mm-hmm. quickly well how do you get rid of your hand quickly either it's cheap aggro or you discard it hellbent mm-hmm. <laughs> And Madness works really well with this card because then you can discard and sometimes yeah. you'll be able to cast a spell or they'll be cheaper. Yeah. Oh, look at that. They're cheap so I can get rid of it faster, right? So it ends up in a perfect home. Yeah. Um, and that's a good example of mechanical. And I think there's plenty of these, right? We have yeah. we have many of these. It could be like, that's a you played Amonkhet and you made a build around Drakehaven um, We love deck, Drakehaven. And you're just like, well, I love to put this in, in my cube, but my regular cube list can't support like i don't want to like have to put in all these cycling cards into my cube cycling cards. <laughs> yeah just to make it so i'll have like the one guy who wants to build around it yep um to to play drake haven in my cube so you say well if i have a modular cube i can put a drake haven and have a cycling theme and put other kind of cycling payoffs put other cycling good things put the cycling lands people love the cycling lands cycling lands are awesome and all of a sudden you have a, a module that all other drafters would love to have a few cycling cards because who doesn't want uh what's the hieroglyphic hieroglyphic illumination hieroglyphic yeah. the one that's like draw cards but has the cycling uh draw it's three blue draw card draw two cards, cards. instant or mm-hmm. cycling blue yeah yeah so it's like perfect like lots of cards want that if you're yeah. in the drake haven deck that's even better yeah and you have some old school astral mm-hmm. slide and uh lightning rift awesome yeah. cards. so basically you give the the people the opportunity to build a a sweet cycling build around deck yeah and the thing that, about cycling that cards, will have the support versus everyone's going to take them versus too. if you have in a 720 list and you have the drake haven like well i hope i hit all the cycling cards in this yeah. in this in yeah. when i pick the 360 and then they might be draft. lower power it won't fit in with yeah. us it's just like people take the cycling cards all the time it's actually pretty i don't think it's even that easy to like make a drake haven deck work mm-hmm. because you got to work for it right and that's good we don't yeah. we don't want poisonous and we're going to get into poisonous later yeah. but I think some other examples, you know, just mechanical stuff, affinity, enchantments we use. Yeah. Uh, tribal, you have to be careful. And yep. we're gonna we're gonna touch more on tribals later, but keep in mind that tribal are really appealing. Everyone loves tribes. Yep. Everyone Who has their favorite tribes. Yeah, goblins, zombies, spirits, humans, dinosaurs, yep. you know, dr- dragons, and then I think even like vampires. We don't play with vampires because but. they were more spread out, but vampires are yep. really liked. Werewolves, there's plenty of directions you can go. But some tribes are more flexible than others, and we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, and then some generic examples, because you don't only have to do mechanics. Right? Yep. We have, that we have, we're using examples that we have, uh, flash control. Yeah. Guess what? Those are all instants or flash cards. Yes. Or there's <laughs> like, it. or you could have uh, an archetype just ramp, like gener- gen- generic ramp. You could and have- ramp pay- payoff. 
Yeah, you could either choose, you know, you could have like, you know, Manador ramp, you could have, you know, land sheet ramp, you could have uh those red ramp spells like yeah. a seething song. Yeah, the you kind can of the bombs. rituals, yeah. You can pick or you can like maybe have some different bomb. It's um and actually ramp is a particularly benefit of uh modular cubes, I think, cuz like you really get to do different stuff with green because green's best thing is always ramp and we've always had a ramp module yeah and then it's like well guess what green has to do other stuff in the other modules so we yeah. end up with like zoo where you get to play wild nakato and that play style agro green yeah have like uh enchantments is a whole different like yeah. green engine that gets to be put yeah. together green value um, engine now green is the least represented color uh out of our modules but um like overall in terms of like all the total sum mm -hmm. of cards the least percentage wise is green but um i don't i think that's just coincidence i, I think it's yeah. just eventually it, it, it there's probably a sway and pull to it where it's like sometimes it's not sometimes it is yeah. and, um and uh, uh, lastly some thematic archetype examples that really is just like a theme for us yeah uh chaos and pinata i think is their staple yeah. uh there is five pinatas the rest of it is chaos and we define chaos to just be like weird ass magic cards so you yeah. get like triska decaphobia you get a uh, demonic pact. You also get cards like, um, what am I missing? Uh, oh, smokestack. Yeah, just these really obscure Rear cards. Cards that kind of skew yeah. the game, and it's not necessarily like we don't want to play with every time because it's kind of like, oh, this again. Yeah. But like oh, every every chimera? every like you know once a month if you play a cube weekly and like kind of like every month it's like kind of this comes up and you're like oh this is a wonky game this is kind of yeah. fun and it's different. And it turns out and there's no chaos and pinata deck. Right, mm -hmm. which is cool because like there is a life gain kind of thing. Yeah. Like there's life gain cards that fit well together. Yeah. And then you know, in terms of ramp, it's just something. You know, there's like yeah. there's not really a ramp deck. There's just a deck that takes some ramp cards and some ramp payoffs, and then it has some other stuff. Yeah. And so it's like the farther we're going along, right? The mechanical examples are more of decks. The generic archetypes are less mm -hmm. of decks, and they really just push directions mm -hmm. overall. And then these thematics are just anything, right? Like yeah. chaos. We have ETBs, which is just like creatures with ETBs, and then there's yeah. birthing pond. So. Yes, some guy will want the birthing pods to make a deck out of it, but he'll use cards in the module and out of the module. And then yeah. other than that, it's just a bunch of creatures with ETBs. Yeah. They can support aggro, they can support control, yeah. they can support whatever, right? Uh, Multi-love is just multicolored cards and a bunch of fixing. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? You're just If you that's in there, you're going to have a bunch yeah, of five-color decks. It's just kind of like a really fun time where it's like, let's all try to get yeah, you just a multicolored deck. More, instead of having like yeah. four three-color plus deck drafters, maybe you have like six three-color plus drafters, including... Mm -hmm like two or three five color drafters yeah because of this because there's just like more incentive to go multicolor yeah. and there's more fixing yeah so let's go into kind of building these modules and i think there's a common misconception like everyone talks about you want balance in your cube you want color balance you want your curves to be there um basically once you pick your theme like when you have your module you don't have to have like you know all five colors I represented you equally don't want to. And, and and yeah in fact you you don't want to go for that you want to you just want overall that if you were to pick kind of eight at random pseudo random you can kind of pick and choose the modules you want to play with but if you were to pick um enough modules for your cube you want it to be somewhat balanced but it doesn't have to be exact because that's yeah, just like too hard us, to keep track for of. example you know in terms of two color modules mm -hmm. we're pretty even across Mo all colors have either one or two yes i think one color has three boros has three i think mm -hmm. and then but then if you go to three colors esper has one but bant and grixis has four Right? That's just how it turned out. Now, mm -hmm. this means that the newer modules are less likely to be Bant and Grixis and more likely to be Esper. And, but overall in our cube, if you actually look at our percentage of colors, they're within like 1% really of close, each other. Yeah. They're pretty close. And that's what matters, right? Like, and when we go to pick it, we do work on a pseudo random pick yeah. so that we pick and then we look at the colors representation yeah. and we kind of aim for like a margin of error. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can go into detail maybe like later on how to play it or how to pick yeah. it. But um, but for the most part, we can pick randomly and it'll still be a cool draft mm -hmm. environment. Um, and then you got to pick the cards. That's the best part. Yeah. So it's almost like deck building, but and cube kind of combined into one because you're you're picking these specific cards to fit either your mechanic or your theme or your just general archetype. So similar yeah. to how you'd you know build a constructed deck. But you can be more adventurous because And make sure you're not building a deck. Yeah. That's one thing to like, know. You don't want to just say, here's, you know, my twenty card module and here's the twenty cards that make this a yeah. perfect deck. You want to make sure there's cards that 
everyone wants yes. and you don't like you don't even need to like for example if you're having an enter the battlefield kind of theme it you don't have to pick you can pick any colors like yes. you, that like could for, be a, we pick not red so yeah. the other four colors yeah and there are cards that are really good at tempo plays there are cards that are really good at control there are cards that are good at mid-range like aggro, there's just there's, everywhere like yeah. there's mold drifter and there's skin render or no uh, not skin what's the shriek maw yeah right and then there's like reflector me they're all over the place right yeah. there's plenty of cards and uh and you know you do what you will mm -hmm. that's that's a pretty broad module and then there's aggro egg um uh hellbent madness hellbent aggro that's like no look we're gonna push aggro and there's going to be a couple of aggro drafters but even then even in El aggro hellbent madness you still have cards that work in mid-range decks there's still cards that work for example uh tormented elusive tormentor is that the four drop four, the one four? that flips into the yeah. proof he can be a win con for control yeah right or he could be a great mid-range card yes or he could be a good top end for an aggressive deck <laughs> right yeah. he can fit anywhere like there are these cards that fit in a mate and oftentimes he won't be played by the hyper aggro hellbent guy but he could be right mm -hmm. or he could not be right avaricious dragon too you could play him in a mid-range deck if you want it probably not he's he's way more leaning towards the aggro spectrum right lupine prototype also loop leaning towards the aggro but that doesn't mean that deck's going to come together every time right yeah you could be fighting like may maybe zombies is in the module now all of a sudden there's, there's a guy that's taking all these cards and then there's another guy taking something else right so the cards get split up but it, it still works picking cards still very similar to how you would it, think about how you would build archetypes in cube but make them more broad yeah right i think that that's a good explanation yeah like if you have a 360 cube and you're like look i want black white to be the life gain colors well when you put in a black card with life gain you also want it to be picked by the green black guy and yeah the green, you want it to be splashable basically exactly you want it to be picked by the blue what uh, you want the to blue consider black guy, people who white, might not be black. in a life gain theme who yeah. still like that card yep yeah. And, um, and and then again, you can also put like the Kabir Crossroads, which is four to life gain, but just yeah. make sure that you have cards that do make it so it's not just, here's a module, here's the deck, yeah. and you should have You don't want like Karlov and 30 other black, black white cards that only want to be played mm -hmm. in a black deck because all they do is like Drano's Emissary and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and that's it. Like you could like, put like a uh, Regal Caracal in a life gain uh, module, but lots of white decks will still love to play it even yep. though they're not caring about life gaining yep. or legion's landing card. right yeah. any aggressive white deck will probably play legion's landing yeah now it works amazingly in life gain because it makes one one life linkers yeah but yeah uh and then you have to think about uh you know the num all those categories you've said ramp removal uh, board wipes all that stuff counter spells yeah is all card dependent draw. on uh the, what your core is so to put an example keep in mind what our core was so half a pack per player is a core two and a half packs is a, each module eight modules so for us we have two removal per player counting hard removal board wipes counter spells and hand disruption in the core so we figured out that each module needs five to eight removal spells okay and modules that want to push few creature strategies so this is our modules like instant sorcery well it needs way more because mm -hmm. it needs to overload removal spells in one player's hand well, then it has 13 to 20 removal spells. That's fine, right? You, you're you going to have to adapt. So it's very dependent on what your core is, what's the size, and how many you want, right? We kind of want, I don't know, five to eight removal spells per player kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Maybe a, five to 10-ish. So that's what we aim for. Two in the core, five to eight in the modules. Um, board wipes we commented on. Yep. Going through our show notes here, and we kind of uh, tend to go all over the place. Yeah. Um, Oh, right. This is a great one. Practice will make better. Uh, we have had morph modules. Yeah. We've it, had modules come and go. It was shit. We've had... We learned that. We've had tree we folk on. modules. Oh, yes. Tree folk saplings. And then the worst part is we tested, and not after the first time. We thought it, we thought it was, wasn't good, but, you know, we're scientists. No, I fought for it. For we're scientists. Time. One data point isn't good enough, so we tried again. Still wasn't good. We tried a third also, time. Dominaria came out and introduced a bunch of good tree folk cards, yeah. like uh, what's it called, slime foot. Yeah. And so we we, you mean we were able to, cards? yeah, sapling. Yeah. Sorry. And so we were able to weed out the shit. Tree folk. Tree folk. Yeah. But you know, you know, um, like like don't discount like it's kind of half the fun is is experimenting with these modules because hey, you only invested one module and you have and if you've you know iterated with your modules, you might say like I have 
you know, enough modules that are in a healthy spot. Like, let's just try these out there things. Yep. And if it doesn't work out, it's okay because it's only one module. And, and if, if the you cube cut the doesn't module, depend if on you it. cut the whole module, it doesn't mean they have to cut every card. Yeah. That just means... Like, let's say you're like, man, I've been really happy with these 20 cards, but I suck this module. Mm. Okay, cut the other cards, take these 20, and spread them out. Yeah. Right? Like, for let's example, say, Morph. We had a Morph module. All the Morph cards are there. We tried it. It shit. doesn't really work as it a module. It does not work. You don't want to play three mana two twos in cube. So what mm. do we do? We took all the ones that were still viable, usually the two mana Morphs that mm -hmm. could be played later in the game. Essentially, it works like a kicker, mm -hmm. but it's Morph. Uh, and we spread them out. And now they're all over the cube, and we have like I don't know, fifteen, mo fifteen morph cards, yeah. I think, all over the cube, and they're and great. They Complement the modules. Yeah, they always it's they see that, play regularly. Yeah. They're a really healthy spot, but we cut the morph modules. Crap. Mm -hmm. um, poisonous. Could, yes. So this comes into, like we said, don't make your modules like single decks. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I know we talked about uh, tribal themes. Yeah. Um, this is where the poison, poisonous. This poisonous of, of these uh, tribal themes comes out. For example, be careful with like zombies because what makes usually zombies good? More zombies, zombie lords. And basically, who wants a zombie lord or if you're, you don't have a critical mass of zombies? Yeah, which as a result, we've tended away from this super hyper aggro zombie into this more graveyard value zombie deck that yeah. really works with any graveyard strategy, yeah. including, for example, looting. Yeah. Right or menace. It's like, oh, I, yeah. I, I want to actively throw yeah. away stuff because I get value out of it. Because I remember when we first did our zombie module, it was pretty much an aggro zombie. You'd play your grave crawlers, your prized amalgams. You'd have your zombie lords. Yeah. And you just like run over your opponent with yeah. this deck. But the only trouble was when no drafting one it. Zombies. Yeah. Um, it's either you wanted all the zombies and people would give you all the zombies, because no one else would want a prized amalgam, unless you're like in the zombie deck. Yeah. Or you, no one wants the, the the zombie lords unless you're in the zombie deck. Yep. So we actually, like, instead of saying, like, okay, yeah, we realized zombies were, were a problem. But we didn't have to get rid of zombies. And like you said, we switched it into more, well, how about, like, a more graveyard, discard, make tokens type, type yeah, of zombies. Yeah, it's more of a value thing. And you care about zombie. zombies. You still want. But as a result, a lot of zombies are playable for many different decks, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it really helps, for example, the new zombie card that we reviewed in M19. I already forgot his name. But the BB32, that yeah. for two and a black, exile a card from your graveyard and make a 2-2. Two -two, yeah. That card doesn't have to be played by zombies. Yeah. You can, Many aggressive decks will like a 3-2 a for BB. Or many mm -hmm. black decks. It doesn't even have to be aggressive. Like Sometimes you just play a 3-2 and then it's just going to generate value. So even a mid-range deck might want this. Mm -hmm. right? So it really is spreading out of who wants the zombies and who doesn't. right? And it, it it's really working more with other people. Uh, with other clans and and we'll go over some more specific examples later i believe um i don't know there's show notes i'm sure they're in there yeah um so i thought that we could really focus in as examples for the modules we have right so we're gonna go over because yeah we can say everything in abstract but really sometimes you just need a concrete example yeah and so keep in mind we're gonna say all our card names throughout this we're not gonna explain anything but i'm i have faith in our listeners they're avid cube designers and they'll, players. They'll recognize. They'll, they'll know recognize what these the cards. cards do. So we have five modules we're going to go over. So first enchantments, right? So as a, as an example, it's a three color modules. So what is our land? One tri land, three basic, three duels. Well, yes. guess what? They're like because it's uh, uh Abzan. Well, you have a Selesnian land, Orzov land, and a Golgari land, and you have yeah. the tri land. Really, Makes see, sense. it's like easy, easy peasy, right? Now. This is one of the more cares about the enchantments module, right? So this is already leaning towards more of the poisonous than as life can. 13 enchantment magic cards, right? This yeah. can vary from blessed spirits and Ajani's chosen all the way to Daxos, right? Which is a huge difference. Yeah. Right? Um, or like Doomway Giant. Or Doomway. Or Doomway. Doomway can be played just in a regular deck. Yeah. Because you play it, it gives minus one, minus one to everything. And if you have more enchantments, great. But it needs very little enchantments. While Sigil, well... You need, you need like eight, ten yeah. enchantments, right? And so you get this really, and and so yeah, we so have people can fewer either of those. Play a few enchantments and still get value, yes. or people can play a lot of enchantments. So out of these value. thirteen cards, a lot of them just need a few, right? Like yeah. Blood Curse Knight. Well, it's a three-two for three. Mm -hmm. Okay, kind of weak for cube, but if you have four enchantments in your deck, you're mm -hmm. gonna reliably have him as a four-three life linger. Because mm -hmm. you have to remember, enchantments linger; they just sit there. So you draw this late. Well, it's a four. It's a four-three life linker for three. That's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. 
If you mm-hmm. also care about life gain triggers, or if you're an aggressive deck just looking to beat down, right? Or maybe you're just worried about your life. Maybe you're doing some life sacking thing. Really works out well, right? While, you know, uh, Sigil or another one is like Daxos the Return. Well, that's a 5-5 the turn you play them, but you better have some more enchantments to follow yeah. up or else you just played a, <laughs> you just domed your opponent for five. Yeah. Um, or maybe it just got ch- chump blocked by a 1-1 one, one Flying Spirit and then you're like, oh, huh, this kind of feels miserable. Yeah. Um, and then, well, so you kind of want to support those, right? Yeah. So what do we do? Um, we put all our removal, all our card draw, all the creatures that, at least the ones that don't yeah. care about, like don't, aren't the enchantment matters cards, are just enchantments. Yeah, so like you get your Oblivion Rings, you get your Pacifism type effects, and those are great because they act like removal and they also act as enchantments. So you get kind of yep. value off the... Seal of Doom has been amazing. Yeah. Been extremely happy with Seal of Doom. Yep, that's the black... Uh, Two black, yep. uh, and then black activated. Yeah, sacrifice. sack doom blade. Yeah, yeah. When it's a really weird doom blade because it offers a bunch. It gives you the enchantment trigger, but then you don't have to use it. Yeah. Or you can use it early when you even if you don't have a trigger for it, you just use it, and then you get to save mana later, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then like you know, promise of bun ray. I think we did a cube card spotlight on yeah, it. I well, heard. really, that's a four four, you yeah. know, effectively. But when you play it, it's an enchantment trigger. Yes. Um, you get like brain uh, maggot, which is kind of like a, a thought seize. Yeah. Or like, uh, what's that? There's that other guy who who does that stuff that's really popular. But with Brain Maggot, well, he's an enchantment. So mm-hmm. it triggers an enchantment. And then you just have the generic good stuff, you know? Like your Bitter Blossom. Awesome enchantment. Yep. Uh, Luminarch's Ascension. I think we've already spoken about yeah. how we love that card. Yeah. Your Glare uh, of Subduel. Yeah. Just, also, it's done work. Yeah. Profane Procession, which has been... I mean, we want more data points, but it's been pretty decent it's extremely good when your opponent only has one threat yeah and pretty bad when your opponent has more yeah um but yeah so like you can see how like well yeah there's a lot of enchantment mana card but a lot of them needs very little yeah. and then all the other support goes all over the place right yeah. so let's let, let's talk so we talked about this enchant module so let's say like let's talk about a life gain module and then after we talk about the life gain module let's see about the synergies that you could have mm-hmm. between the two so let's look at our life gain module that we play. So we put it in two colors. Um, we did white and black. White and black, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we made two duels and three utility lands. So we don't need a tri land because it's only two colors. Yeah. So these utility lands basically support the life gain, and and these utility lands, uh, what, what lands are there? They're the uh, uh, Vault of the Archangel. Yep. Kabira Crossroads, and the last one is Oh High Market. Yeah. Commander Staple. Uh, I I actually have been disappointed a little bit with High Market. It yeah. has not performed yet, but I think it's just that it hasn't really hit its stride. I think it will perform more. Yeah, maybe when you get into like a like a token module yeah, especially, with it, yeah, exactly. then you could really abuse it. And yeah. especially combined now with uh, the new card, the Legion's Landing, yeah. which is going to provide a lot more of inner module synergy. Yeah. But I do think that if you have more yeah. go-wide strategies uh, along with yeah. it in the same draft, then we're going to see it yeah. shine more. But I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, Vault of the Archangel has done work. Yeah, day in day out. Yeah, I mean, we used to have a uh, Zeran Orb in there, but that was almost too good for it. Zeran Orb did prove to be in unbelievably good. Yeah, but anyway, oh, yes. so the cards we we do have in it currently, we have cards that basically trigger when you gain life. So like things like a Johnny's Pride Mate, uh, Lone Rider, the flip card, um, Archangel Thune, Crested Sunmare, um, Karlov, and Vizcopa Guild Mage. Um, so basically this is kind of like your semi like AP mechanic of life gain. You have like cards that gain you life, which is kind of good for your life. And then yeah. cards that benefit from you gaining life. But you also have like, the thing is that, for example, Archangel Thune. Well, Archangel Thune gains life himself. Yeah. Any white player will take, Archangel Thune is like an unbelievably good card. Mm-hmm. So already he doesn't need any support. Now he's better with support, right? If you can play him and then swing and your opponent's tapped out, well, guess what? You're going to get a bunch of counters before your opponent can remove them, so that's a lot of value. But you also have cards like Karlov that really shine. You know, Karlov is good with five sources. He's really good with ten. If you ever have fifteen sources, Karlov is an absolute bomb. Yeah. Right. I I've never drafted. We've I, I don't think anyone has drafted a twenty life gain source deck. <laughs> but holy cow, Karlov yeah. is just like you could probably lose on turn two if you don't have removal. Mm-hmm. Like turn three, your opponent can be like gain, 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 and you're just like ah, uh, game's over. Yeah. But yeah, um, but really, you know, they're not very poisonous. That's the key part. Yeah. It's like there's there. They can they can be they can have a deck around them. But they but, can also kind of support themselves. They're not. And they can like, also like 
go between like if yeah. me and you are drafting this uh, black white deck you can have a few of these i can have a few of these we can each have a few of life gain sources yeah and it would be completely legit decks that maybe mm -hmm. you're doing an aggro deck and i'm doing a mid-range deck or maybe you're a control mm -hmm. deck who is using utilizing like spirits because that's mm -hmm. in the draft and i'm an aggro deck that's yeah. utilizing tokens yeah so so we also have like the the life gain the cards that gain life so we have things like survival cash Ily, which sacks creatures gain life um chalice of life which how's that where it taps and it you taps gain life? to gain one life but they're also yeah. life they're actually the more poisonous part of the life yeah because yes they each gain life by themselves but but they also not, have a life gun threshold yeah and there's not really competition unless your goal is a build around life because Ily and uh yeah. chalice both need 30 to be able like yeah. Ily is just going to self come on it's a two three yeah. death toucher that can gain you life yeah. and then if you ever get to 30 it just has an amazing ability yeah. But Chalice is like useless unless you can reliably get to thirty. Yeah. You reliably get to thirty, and then Chalice becomes this like win con. Yeah. And I've I've had decks that just don't have enough life gain to play Chalice, and I've yeah. had decks that do get there. And Chalice yeah. is awesome. It's so much fun because yeah. you really you never have to attack. You attack for the life gain trigger. You're just yeah. like, uh, yeah, I can suicide my tutu to get to thirty, mm -hmm. and then I will flip my thing, and then well, you got to win in like five to four turns. Yeah um uh, so it's really fun yeah what's the what's the removal that that gains life equal to the toughness that's in black no uh i think that's the sack one that one's not in what we used to play with is vendetta which loses life equal to toughness i oh. think uh but vendetta moved somewhere else because yeah. it was that new guy that we just reviewed yeah. in m19 what is it the the one that's minus x minus x like you gain life and then it gives minus yeah. x minus x but there is the one that's like uh target player sacks a creature i don't remember tribute yeah. to hunger i think it's called mm -hmm. um but Sounds then there's familiar. also like amazing removals like uh essence extraction which is okay mm -hmm. death what is the goal x white black deal x damage oh uh, is a lot of harsh sustenance play. no no oh i know what you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. death something i forgot that one uh oh there's faith feathers faith feathers yeah. amazing um uh, there's a, a lot of amazing As pacifism that gains life when yes. it enters yeah yeah um and then also like the creatures we have plenty of creatures that just like have life gain and they fit in many yeah, different you get your, yeah um for example like um the uh, uh vampire nighthawk he's just a solid mid-range creature yeah. that can also fit in aggro decks yeah. um and then there's the the dwarf version of it what's his name there's drona's emissary Air, no the two th oh, there's drona's emissary oh, there's, oh yeah there's the, the two three with flying yeah, the aerial aerial responder yeah. yeah he's awesome he's actually done He's not as good as Vampire Nighthawk, but, he's still but pretty good. plenty of white decks want him. Yeah. Uh, so you just end up with all these life gain cards that are they go everywhere. Mm -hmm. There, there, there's many different like kinds of cards, right? Like Aerial Responder much rather be in an aggressive deck, while Vampire Nighthawk can be in a vamp in a mid range or control mm -hmm. deck much better because of the death touch aspect of it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, promotes competition. Yeah. Doesn't become so, a toxic deck. Yeah. So imagine if you had these two modules in in your draft. It so happened that you had your enchantment module and your life game module in. Yeah. Well, if you look at um, the life game module we just talked about, we have cards like Legion's Landing and, and Faith's Fetters. These are enchantments that care about life game, but also like you know, an enchantment module with an Eidolon of Blossoms will now value. They will. You know. Yeah. Um, There's no reason why cards, they wouldn't yeah. take Legion's Landing. Like yeah. just. There are plenty of enchantment modules that yeah. want to be tempo yeah. yet aggressive. Yeah. Legion's Landing fits right in. Yeah. And same with Face Feathers. It's just a good removal spell. Yep. And then, you know, and even then, even if you're not doing enchantments or life gain, like if you're just an aggro deck, you'll just take Legion's, Legion's Landing. Landing. Legion's Landing been, and if you're yeah. in white, you might highly pick Face Feathers because of the removal and the tempo you get from gaining a bit of life. Yep. Um, and if you look at the enchantment and how you have uh, cards that care about um, life gain you could have cards like nyx fleece ram which is a enchantment creature that also gains life that's a reliable yeah. life gain trigger every turn it's pretty that good it's and it's a brick wall for and it's a brick wall for a lot of our yeah. decks. that card might be a little bit op <laughs> we, yeah we will talk about it one day <laughs> uh, but even herald of the pantheon right yeah. maybe you mix the two and herald of pantheon says whenever you mm -hmm. cast an enchantment spell gain a life well now you can have like you can have Karlov on the field and a Herald of the Pantheon, and then you can just have a bunch of enchantments you want to cast, right? So they it cross synergy. You're playing. Yeah. You care about enchantments and life gain. It's not one or the other. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a you know, a toxic. Oh, this is the enchantment deck. This is the life gain yeah. deck. 
And you have a uh, cross like energy blind obedience. That's the extort, right? Yes. Yeah. So extort is you know gain a life, opponent loses a life. It's an yep. enchantment that basically says you can make you can have like life gain on every time you cast yeah trigger, every time yeah. you cast a spell get a life gain trigger yeah which is really loud because that card like Karlov or card like uh um uh, ajani's pride mate or what's it called archangel thune they are all triggers so if you can cast a life that gains your life and you can pay a, a mana to Game gain more, life yeah that's two triggers right yeah. all of a sudden Karlov goes from a two two to a six six mm-hmm. that's yeah. not trivial right especially when you you Karlov gets now imagine you cast an enchantment with blind obedience yeah and Harold that gains your life. That's yeah. a Karlov activation. Yeah. So like we say, going back to kind of like the 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 meat and potatoes of of how you design your modules, you kind of do the same principle as like a regular three like regular cube where you're like, this card is great in enchantments. If you you know have a regular cube and you have picked your archetypes and themes, and you evaluate a card like yes this deck would want it, yes this deck would want it, and you realize oh look, like out of my whatever eight archetypes in my in my three sixty cube. Yep it's wanted in six of them. This is a pretty good card. You can still think of that with uh, like a card like we talked about with the cross tenure, like Faith's Fetterer is like, it's good in life gain. It's good in... Enchantments. Enchantments. It's good, it's good in, in any control deck. Yeah. Any control, any any module that pushes control. So that yeah. could be like uh, Top Miracles is a yeah. module that pushes control. Uh, flash Control pushes control. Now it doesn't have Flash, yeah. but that is a, a banned control yeah. deck. So, um, I think Legion's Landing is even more yeah. obvious, right? Legion's yeah. Landing is like tokens... Life gain. Life gain. Uh, even like even something like heroic auras, mm-hmm. right? Like maybe you just generate a token and then you mm-hmm. put an aura on it because like now you're only getting one for one, right? Mm-hmm. But because it's an aura, your token's still relevant, yeah. right? Creates creatures. It's awesome. Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, you're not really like reinventing the wheel on cube design yeah. when you're making a modular cube. You're just kind of just you're kind of segmenting it so you kind of can kind of like slot in yeah. archetypes, but then they don't necessarily have to have the pure synergy each time yes. you play. And it's not like every card's going to yeah. work with everything, right? Like, Drana's Emissary does not work with enchantment. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean enchantment module couldn't run Drana's Emissary. Maybe it's what it's looking yeah. for. Like, the card does do something. But, you know, when you're building your module, you know what other modules are. And, and yes, if you're starting from scratch, you kind of have to go like, oh, what modules do I want? Maybe you want to pick a few before you even start building it, right? Maybe you want to have like 10 or so an idea. But for us, it's like, okay, let's say we're building a white base module. Well, we have an idea of all the white modules that we have. We know it's enchantments. We know it's life gain. We know it's tokens. We know it's uh, heroic auras. We know it's like top miracles. So when we're building a new one, right? Let's say we're building some new one because of a set that came out, like maybe an artifact based one. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that like an enchantment would work really well. So maybe we want to include that. So we already know what, what modules are there to exist, right? We know the space. So when a new module comes in, you can really go like, oh, okay, what what other works? Can, what what else is gonna work? And you'll be surprised. Like these cards are just gonna fit in naturally. Like, Faith Feather and Legion's Landing are just obvious includes in life gain, and then they just work, right? It's not a, it, it's just natural. Like mm-hmm. because you have such depth in types of modules, you're gonna have that depth in cross energy. Yeah. Um. Well, those two are mechanical modules. Yeah. Let's examine a less mechanical module. What do we call them? I already forgot what I call these. Uh, generic archetyped yeah. examples. So we have a module that's called Agro Disruption. And yep. It's not really a th- like a theme. It's, it's like a, it's aggressive. Yeah. And it disrupts. Yeah. And so you'll guess it. Mm-hmm. The cards in it are right. aggressive. And disruptive. <laughs> and they disrupt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's three colors. Yeah. And it has three duos. Yes. Now it doesn't have a try. Two reasons. One, there's only one try land for each color. So yeah. there was already a Grixis module. And two, yeah. this module is aggressive. So you don't really want to be telling your players to go yeah. through colors. Well, and you don't want to tap try land. Yeah. And guess what the dual lands are? They're fast lands. Yeah. <laughs> right? Fast lands are sick for aggressive. They really push aggro. So that's where they are. Yep. So basically, uh, yeah, like, like it says, we've just filled this module up with, uh, you know, cheap aggressive creatures and cards that disrupt like you know your thought seas and your yep. duress and and they can go in any combination of yeah. blue black red decks and not it not only that but like mm-hmm. the red cards could easily go in a red green aggro deck right and so this module doesn't really it's even like now there could be a deck that gets together that's 23 of these cards of course you could draft that who mm-hmm. knows right but when you're drafting it's going to push more drafters around the table to go oh there's a lot of aggressive blue black red cards 
You know, maybe a guy goes red green, maybe a guy goes blue red and picks a lot of these cards. Mm-hmm. That's fine. There's no yeah. reason why they couldn't pick a lot of these cards. Yeah, but also like you know, you could have. It doesn't mean you have to go pure aggro and disruption. You could see maybe the, you know, the control player is like, oh, I like these disruptive cards. I'll splash black. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't. Like, or if I'm a- aggressive, I'm like, I want to splash these yeah. Inquisition because I want to stop my opponent from doing something early. Colagons come on. Yeah. Uh, what else is in there? Uh, the Chandra, Chandra Torch of Defiance. Yeah. Right. There's plenty of cards that we'll see. Like removal, any disruption really like can go anywhere, right? It is yeah. just there's a lot a reasonable amount of removal. Um, what I do like about this mod, Drew, is that it does have the five hand reception spells. So Totsies we run in the core, yes. but it has Inquisition, the rest, the spies, harsh scrutiny, and Cabal Therapy. Yeah. And that is one of my favorite decks to draft is when that comes together. When you're able to get the six of them. <laughs> really the six is like, oh so good. And then there's also like three discard spells in there, but you can get discards all over the place. Um, but these are like Blightning, Kologon's Command, or like smallpox. Um, but like you really you get that together, and then you get the aggressive cards, and then mm. you can you just run rat, havoc on your opponent. You play a bunch of cheap threats, and then you board, and then you look at their hand, and they're like, "Oh, that's a nice board wipe. Get out of here." Thought sees that away on turn three, and they're yeah. just like, "Oh, they were waiting to board wipe you, baiting you," and then you're like, "Oh, that's a good anger. Go away." And then you're like, "Oh, that planeswalker is gonna stabilize." Ah, heart, um, heart scrutiny is that planeswalker? I don't know. The rest, the spies, the spy, yeah. the spies that away so much fun and it really makes you think about oh which one do i use first and but that deck doesn't always come together it's rare right because yeah. there's five of them plus totsies and well guess what other drafters will want those cards too like harsh cut i've been super impressed with harsh scrutiny and then i mean i don't have to talk about totsies and inquisition mm-hmm. players just know that's good and cabal therapy as was the, my last uh, cube spotlight yeah is awesome yeah and this is like uh one of those moments where you know if you don't want to devote your entire cube like black to be around this theme yeah like you don't need to invest all like your whole cube design well to support imagine this, if you have a 360 deck. cube right that's 50 black cards probably yeah. around 50 do you really want six of them to be these disruption spells just so that 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 yeah. comes together and that's not yeah probably not you're probably not going to run six of those you're probably going to run three four with us we can just be like yeah I want three sixty five six of yeah, the three sixty. I want to try a cube when this module in there. It's a three sixty list where there'll be six of these structure yeah. spells, and you don't feel bad about being like I sacrificed so much out of my cube to make this work. And who knows, maybe it's it's only fun for one player once in a while. Ah, it's so much fun. So, like at least you don't have the same player always drafting it. You can, and everyone else hates it. It happens once in a blue moon. This one comes together. Yep. But it's not like every cube. There's like the potential for one person to get it. It's yep. I agree. Uh, yeah, and then uh, it does have less synergies, as you can tell. Mm-hmm. There's less inner card synergy. Yeah, so that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Not every module. I, I think actually you shouldn't want every module to be like life gain and chain. Yeah, because that just adds these. to the to the poisonous toxicity. Exactly. Of, of the, the module. This module is like barely poisonous yeah. at all. Yeah, if you threw it all together, you kind of have this weird deck that kind of does a lot of things efficiently, but doesn't really close a game. Yeah. You need to lean on the support of your other archetypes and other modules to get you that win this just really supplements and kind of skews other people's decks to kind of fit this theme or have you know push a mid-range to be more aggressive push a control to play more mid-range yeah you know um moving on another example which is also different legendary and legendary sounds like it's oh this is going to be life gain but really this is an example of yes it has a cards that care about having a critical mass of legendaries but then it also just has good legendary cards and yeah. good removal. So, for example, we have 14 cards that care about legendary. Well, five of, the, five of them are the Kamigawa land cycle. That cycle has no drawback. Yeah. Literally, you can play in a deck that has one single legendary creature. You will play one of those cards. Like yeah. the black one, right? Let's say you have a, um, I don't know, uh, what's a black legendary? Any black legendary. Gonti. You have Gonti. Yeah. Why would you not play the black legendary swamp that doesn't enter tap taps for swamp and if you play black tap you get to give gonti fear now that will rarely come up yeah but it literally has no drawback yeah so yes they have synergy but you they will go, they will get drafted by anyone yeah. right there's other examples like talia's lenser well that one tutors legendaries how many legendaries do you need two three it's a five mana four four first mm-hmm. striker right like if you that's fine with only two other legendaries. Like that's yeah. it's already drawing you a card. It's sick. 
Um, and obviously you have the ones that need more, like, you know, uh, the legendary sorceries. Yeah, that, that require a legendary permanent obviously on they the need battlefield. Four yeah. or five. But yeah, okay, so they're there. There's a few of them. But then the rest, they're just legendary creatures that are all over the place. Yeah. Right? So we have like aggressive legendaries like Jazal Goldmane and Drana Liberator Malakir. They're in the module. But then you also have mid range legendaries like Mathas Fiendseeker and Gaunti Lord of Luxury. Right? Those are completely different. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have a deck that has Drana and Gaunti. Yeah. But by no means is that going to be assembled because they're going to be value different according to very different. So, mm -hmm. yes, you have a, a theme that looks like it's life gain, looks yeah. like it's salmon, but it's way more broad. Yeah. And the cards in it are way more broad. So, yeah. really, you can you can do that with life gain too, right? You can do a life gain that's like, well, I'm going to have the aggressive life gain cards and the mid-range life gain cards, and they're really going to be wanted by completely different people which is kind of what the legendary, or you can do what we did with life gain and put it together, right? So you have that huge breadth of choice as a mm -hmm. designer, right? Um, and then as an example, there are also the cards that work with life gain, yeah. like Mathas, like Brian Stoutarm, and like Sapling of Kalfanor. Yeah, so basically, yeah, if you're making a legendary theme, you can just like see, okay, what other modules do I have that I'm building or have built or will plan to build? And maybe like, well, if I just put legendary things that kind of will also fit those themes, like you just get the kind of accidental synergy of being legendary yep. with just a few legendary matters cards. Yep. And you'll get these other modules that will take these cards. So it's not just, I'm legendary, I want legendary creatures. You'll get yeah. this legendary creature is just great. Like you could even say, well, maybe I just put Eile in the legendary module instead of the life game module. That's true. Yeah, why, why not? Yeah. Eile is good on its own. It, it'll see play in, in decks that aren't just mm -hmm. uh, life game. And that's really just like, you know, maybe on support. like an iteration of your cube, you might try it out and be like, well, maybe... Eile works better in the yep. legendary cube. Maybe I find it's too good with life gain because it just synergizes way too well. I don't want Eile to be with all these life gain cards all the time. Yeah, and for us, sometimes someone does get the Captain Cisse deck, right? They mm -hmm. get the 10, 15 legendaries, and it's like, and really the deck just turns out to be like a collection of value legendary yeah. cards because you're playing it's like, like a birthing pod in a way, but yeah, and like, but the cards are like yeah. even less synergistic. Like you're just like, I will play Felden of the Third Path. And Gaunti, and I don't know, like <laughs> Eile, right? And you're like, yeah. okay, I guess. <laughs> it's just yeah. like this mush of cards. Yeah. And it's really cool. And it doesn't happen every time. A lot of times, Captain Cisse would just be in the sideboard because you yeah. never got there, right? Because the module is way less poisonous, right? It's mm -hmm. way less spread into this is a deck, into look, here's a bunch of legendary cards. There's going to be some legend synergy, but really, it's going to enable all sorts of stuff. And it's going to offer a really cool draft. Like, we also want good stuff decks, right? And so sometimes with the legendary, really you're just enabling a lot of good stuff decks, right? Lastly, our last little uh, look into into uh, modules, chaos and pinatas. We talked about it earlier. Yeah, we talked about the pinatas, like your yeah, things like your horrent nests. Um, what else? Your swans of Bryn Argal. That's a staple. Or Boros yeah. Reckoner. Yeah. You haven't lived until you. Uh, until you. Um, what's it called? Blasphemous act, your Boros Reckoner and your yep. Swans to draw 13 and deal yep. 13 to your opponent's yep. face. So you need your sticks and your pinatas, basically. Yes. But that, that there's only five pinatas, which yep. means that there's 35 other cards. Yeah, and that's the chaos part. So these are like what we said, just the, the weird cards. Like, like what you said that, how do you pronounce it? Triska Decaphobia. Yeah, like that card, or like Midnight Oil. That card's kind of weird. It is weird. Yeah. People but, completely devalue that when it first yeah. came out. But imagine if you put Midnight Oil and just kind of, you just have this, and, and this is cool because this doesn't really have any theme other than like weird, just ass weird cards. effects. But you put Midnight Oil in and all of a sudden, hey, I have a madness thing. This thing says discard oh, yeah, your hand. Oh, that is true. That actually came up, didn't it? Yeah. You Oh, cycling. That's what yeah. it was. It was with that cycling card. Yeah, whenever you Drake cycle Haven. a discard, and then yeah. this thing, for, and then Midnight Oil forces and you to faith, discard. Uh, yeah, Faith of the Devoted. And it's an enchantment, so you're an enchantment theme. It just yes. fits there. And Meadows Hellbent, yeah. Yeah. That's true. It, and control decks that just want to draw more cards. Well, it's not really. It's like yeah. mid range decks because you got to yeah. dump your hand. But the thing is, when you're drawing so many cards a turn, you just like outvalue your opponent. It's yeah. fine if you have an empty hand. Yeah. So it's just like these weird cards. You get demonic pact. You get like, um, gutter grime. What's gutter grime? Gutter grime is the one that whenever a creature you control dies, you put a counter on it and you put an ooze where the ooze's power and toughness is equal to the counter. Yeah. So, and I, I don't remember if the creature, it's creature you control or just creature in general. So imagine you have a mid-range deck or you have an enchantment deck, mm -hmm. right? You put gutter grind. Man, they killed your Nyx Fleece Rain. Well, you get a 1-1, right? But you already got value out of mm -hmm. it because that's a problem with gutter grind. 
kind of doesn't have value right away. Well, now you got a 1-1, one, one, and then they kill something else. Now you got two 2-2s, two, two, and you get three 3-3s, three, and four 4-4s, four, four, Yeah. right? Now, obviously, you're probably trading and jump blocking, but yeah. you can see how it's a non-token. And then, yeah. wow, maybe big tokens are in there. Well, you know what's nice? Populating a 5-5 five, mm -hmm. five to make another 5-5. Five, five. There will later be a 6-6 six, six when something mm -hmm. else dies. Ooh, look at that cross-module synergy. Yeah. Love me some stuff. Um, and it's all over the place, right? Like, there's a death shadow there. Yeah. Well, you know what death shadows work with? Aggro disruption, because that deck has a lot of ways to, like, self-damage. Yeah. You know, you can play a, a lot of uh, stuff that takes your own life. Yeah, fetch, shock, thought seize, turn one. Yeah. You're all of a sudden, you're at, yeah. you're at 16. And look, that shadow usually sits on sideboards. But when it does see play, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. You got to admit. Yeah, you got, like, Rowdy Crew. Yeah, Rowdy Crew goes in any aggressive that's one where you strategy. just, like, draw... What do you draw? Four? Draw three, discard two, a random. Yeah. Uh, and if you discard two, share as a type. Then you get to put two one ones. Or yeah. Two, yeah, so it becomes a five five trampler instead of three three. Yeah. Um you get yeah, so like you can see how like this works with all the modules that mm -hmm. we we uh we talked about, right? Legendary? Well we have the two the Eye of Wisdom and Eye of Chaos, Zindel Split and Okum from the Battle Bond set. Mm -hmm. You also have Harao Zarek. And at least for now you have Tetsamok, but um, I wouldn't hold your <laughs> breath. That card might leave soon. That card is pretty weird we, though yeah we haven't we haven't seen it like i don't think anyone has played it yet because just the, the past few weeks since that we put that card and it keeps yeah. moving modules so it keeps dodging yeah <laughs> dodging seeing play and uh but i i'm it probably would be another bromance where we're like this card is way too good yeah or zero norm but yeah so like the module really doesn't have a lot of like inner cross but it, it just has full of cool cards they're unique cards you never see them they provide different the gameplay like come on demonic pack triskaidekaphobia you don't play with those cards no but they do work with a lot of things triskaidekaphobia enchantments yeah. and life gain right and uh and so you see uh, and any mid-range black deck that yeah. wants to be cool and then also you may find like you know especially like a this module chaos and pinyon you may find that you know you don't necessarily have to give an equal treatment to playability of all your modules Yep. Some modules are like good once once in a while, and maybe it's just like to get everyone's fix for you know weird. I, I hope you're not stuff. suggesting chaos and pinata is only good once in a while. <laughs> are you insane? Are you insane? <laughs> you know what's in there? Smokestack. Yeah. Smokestack has led to some of the best games of Magic that I've played. For example, another another module that we barely play, but we'll do it once just to get the itch, is our OP module. Yep. And all we do is put overpowered cards. Obviously, we picked our power level not to be powered. Yes, it is not even on our on our cube list. Yeah, on Cube Tutor. Yeah, because it's just it's just called OP shit is what we yeah. call it. It just has things like Skull Clamp has. Did we, we put Soaring in? Did we put Soaring yes. in? Yeah. Yes. Just like stupid cards. Yep. That generate way too much value for the power Mostly level. Mostly the they're cube. cards that we've tried out, like a memory jar. They're just yeah. cards that we own that we've tried out in the past. And obviously they were too good. Yeah. And so we we're just like, well, we own the cards, so put them in a deck box and like every, every six once months, in a while we'll be like every year we just slam them in there. And then obviously they warp the whole draft. Yeah. Those become like absolute bombs and the yeah. games revolve around them. But a warm coil engine. Yeah. Um, but they're there. And it's like it's fun because like you don't want to play with it every time, but hey, like every once in a while, like you know, I got my fix. I got to play my skull clamp. Yeah. And, and just... then you remember and you're like, yeah, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this every time. By and the like, end of the day, you're like. And that's the oh, problem okay. with like, you know, the vintage cube is like, yeah, it's like, it's only so many times you lose to like a storm. Yes. Like Lion's Eye Diamond. And then what's that card that lets them play all the cards from their graveyard Yabla. again? And then they just start playing their Lotus and their Moxes again after they sack them all. And, and they're like, what? Lion's this is Eye so <laughs> dumb. Yep. And then, yeah, there's only enough of that. And, and module is a good way to say, well, hey, if I have these cards and people are tired of playing with them, hey, maybe I'll just, you know, kind of carve them out into their own module and then we'll just play with them every once in a while yeah and it becomes a joke yeah so like no one takes it seriously yeah like, so it's, it's like way more lax yeah. no one, like you if you lose you don't mind because yeah. you're like like yeah obviously i lost you cast like soul ring into yeah. like memory jar and warm coil engine it's just like oh okay yeah. Yeah, no i lost um but yeah um yeah so i i hope that these five exams kind of gave people who want to build modular cubes like an idea of From, like, like just how much they can delve into it and how much they can be really broad with it, right? Yeah. Like if you wanted a, a module and you call it good cards and you just 
put random ass good cards. Yeah. Now, okay, what is that going to cause? Well, that's going to cause good stuff decks to happen. Yeah. Less synergy decks. Now, we like a balance. We want good stuff decks to be viable, but we also want synergy decks to be viable, right? Yeah, we don't want, we want one to always beat the other. Exactly. We don't want synergy decks to be everything you do, and we don't want good stuff decks to be everything. We don't want to be like, look, Snapcaster and all these cards are so good that this life gain crap it just sucks. It's just dead weight in a draft. They just wheel mm -hmm. forever and no one wants it, right? We want, oh, look, I drafted Karlov and I took eight life gain cards. Yeah. And maybe they're marginally worse than the good stuff, but combined with my payoff... Yeah, you're going to have a higher ceiling. Yeah. yeah, so like I get a... That's what we want, right? Mm -hmm. And so... I modules like life gain enchantment they push more towards st uh archetype decks and then chaos and pinatas and legendaries well legendaries weird some in between but chaos and pinatas and aggro disruption they pull the other way they pull look good stuff deck really value right now chaos and pinatas are all over the place aggro disruption are really like good stuff aggro decks yeah right so it's like oh there will be aggro decks if that's in which is healthy because that means that we can have drafts where everyone has a controlling deck right and it completely changes it once you realize you're like oh man there's not a lot of aggro cards you can really change the way the aggro work that your decks work right all, every, all of a sudden everyone's like wait a second i don't have to worry so much about aggro because there's just no aggro module mm -hmm. now you don't want that every time that would be a really boring cube experience but this really is skill test skill testing because drafters have to be like you have to recognize that yeah right well if you recognize that like oh my god there's a lot of aggro running around i better be prepared if i'm the dude drafting a control deck then you better be prepared, right? Or else don't draft that control. Adapt, right? Yeah. So it's really cool in that sense. Yeah. But wrapping up with the uh, differences from like, okay. Starting from scratch. You are not going to scratch from scratch. I know we started there and then we went into more of like how to build it. Yeah. Well, how do you do all that but not starting from scratch? So let's say you have a cube. Maybe you, you start off with like a 360. You, you copied the list from a well-known cube and you've made it your own. You've added you know, more themes made it 540. And then you like, like that enough. And you're like, well, I want to make a 720. And then you're kind of like, oh, my cube's getting so big. Mm -hmm. Like, I really want to add cycling to my cube and put things like build around Drake Havens and lightning rifts. Um, but I can't do it with 720. Yep. So we propose you can turn your 720 list or 540 list or even your 360 list and yep. into a, mo into a modular cube. You don't have to take it apart. You can just kind of start to compartmentalize yep. like your 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 cards into these modules, and then boom, there you go. Now you can say, "I'm gonna make my make my cycling theme as I would have put it into a 360 list, but now it's its own module, and I can just kind of take out something and then always draft with these like 20, 30, 40 cards." Yep all at once so um and so a lot of the core a lot of the principles are the same mm -hmm. right so what are some of the difference so first the thing to note is the less modules you start with so let's say for example you have a 360 list and you end up with just eight modules which is just your 360 list split into eight modules the less modules you start with the more the cards are going to bounce around after with the addition of new modules so you add a module that can shift cards all over the place mm -hmm. because you haven't really evened out so if you are going from 360, for example, to double the amount of cards in your cube and have 16 modules, well, that's going to spread out your cards a lot more and the cards are going to find more permanent homes, right? And you're going to be able to... So, so there, a lot of, a good thing to know is like, make you, you know, aim to, um, to, to add quite a bit, right? Yeah. Like not necessarily double the size or something. Like maybe you go from 360 to 540 total cards or something like that, right? Yeah. You don't have to go from 360 to like the behemoth we have at 2,100 cards or some stupid like that. No way, no way. So that's that's too much of an undertaking. But because then you're going to have modules. All, like for example, we went from 720, I think 16 modules Yeah. Uh, w w worth, right? That's how much it would be. Um, but instead of 16, we had... Oh man, this is so long ago, and like I kept updating the spreadsheet, so like there's no original <laughs> list. I think 24, I think. So we added a full like 300-ish cards in the first expansion. Yeah. Um, when the first like mo uh, going to a like going cube. to a modular cube, 200, 300 cards probably, right? Um, and that's natural. Like if your life gain, right? Like we ended up like we had a life gain theme before. We had an enchantment theme. That's why they became modules. They were, they were like the first and second module ever. Uh, well, 
they, we just didn't have enough because we have to like worry about like a lot of other like for example the enchantment life gain cards ended up in the enchantment module and then some of them ended up in the life gain module because they only can only go in one so what ended up happening is cards that were doing double the work only end up in one module so we just yeah. have to fill out those modules more yeah so it's very easy to fill it out at the beginning and i think designers will find that out um and then you gotta you gotta pick your core size and the cards to be in the core like yeah. it's probably I don't, I don't think we added a single card that wasn't in the cube that ended up in the core yeah all the cards that ended up in the core were just cores that, cards that were in the cube to begin with yeah and players will know like you're playing with jace vin prodigy you know he works in many different decks yeah or you put like you know figure out what modules to put your lightning bolt in most likely it's just good in every yes red deck yes and it's so you might want to put the, that card in the core yeah, and it is natural that like our core removal is much better than yeah. the like the uh, removal, module removal. Yeah. Like lightning bolt is in the core, and Hero's like, downfall anger, is in the core. Yeah, hero, uh, Mizium mortars, uh, path yeah. exile, um, damnation, wrath of god. Right? Yeah. You compare wrath of god is in the module, yeah. but then it's like all the module, all the other core, or all the module board wipes are like five mana, six mana. They're like way more yeah. situational. Yeah, you they got have your more fumigates. You got your yeah, got your uh, route. Uh, route. Yeah. yeah, good example. Um, the new one, cleansing ray, I think cleansing yeah. or cleansing. So, yeah, the one that either is uh, it's either destroy artifacts or enchantments or, or just all creatures. creatures yeah. yeah. Um. So like, you know, that's fine. That's fine. It's okay to have a, a removal power level too. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Um. And then you can start divvying up after you take out all the core cards. You can start putting because you'll have your initial modules. Like you can come up. You don't have to start. I think. I think it's wrong to go. Okay, I'm gonna start with an enchantment module. What do I want in it? Okay, put all the enchantment cards. Nah, I think it's more right to go. Okay, enchantment, life gain. What else do I like? Oh, I have a a, a blue aggro thing. I'll do a devotion module. That mm-hmm. one's tricky. Maybe not where you want to start, but you could do that, right? Because devotion module is a little complicated because like it's a little poisonous. Yeah. Um, but I think I think our home for devotion is great. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. There are some exciting changes in the horizon, um, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, another failed module. Uh, knights soldiers warriors and uh, samurai, samurai failed yeah. module it's gone <laughs> go over the detail later um but so you know but you can you can come up with your 8 10 15 modules that you want to start with and then you can go okay look these cards are all my cube and maybe you don't even want to do this online maybe you just want to do it in paper right you open a card and go okay where do i want this it goes on this module and you can just like have columns yeah, right just lay it lay and it just out. start like that and that's where you're going to start with right and then, and then maybe you play around after it's done. After you have everything set up, you're like, oh, you know what? I need to move a little bit. And then you go, and then you're going to spend some time on Gather. And you're going to look at some magic cards. And you're going to be like, oh, it's man, I did this life. like two years ago it's when I was looking life. at Life Game. But it's okay. It's magic. Yeah, it already consumes your life. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it is a huge undertaking. And you will spend a lot of time on Gather. I spent, I looked at every modern card. When I, uh, we first con- transitioned to a modular cube, I looked at every modern legal card. I get, like, I don't know if I had looked at them before, but I literally went on Gather and I said, like, modern, sh- re- clicked on it, and then it's just like, it was like a 10,000 cards or whatever, I forget. <laughs> and, then I, and then it was convert a mana cost order, right? And then visual spoilers, so I could just look at the card, and then I just scrolled for, like, days. And then I would always just select a card, like, okay, put this, put this aside. I want this, I want this. Yeah. And then you start with the like 200 tabs open. And then your Chrome crashes and you're like, oh my God, thank God there's like a restore. <laughs> there has been one time where I Chrome crashed. So I think and we're, I we're seeing push. a bit into uh, Fernando's obsession. I think we're, we're, we're getting, a, getting a little idea. Yeah, I mean, we madness. do have a, a magic podcast. I yeah. think there's a reason for that. But yeah, uh, yeah that's natural. Um, and uh, yeah, it really helps if you yeah. take these new cards. And most importantly, like, like you're probably not going to get it right the first time. Oh, don't worry. For like, sure, you're gonna make like bad it's modules. like how many times were you happy with your first cube that you designed from scratch? Like, that's half the fun, I think, as a designer is, you know, talking with your play group, discussing, arguing about cards, debating. That's kind of the the t- part about cube that I think people don't tend to talk about but it's well don't talk about like the meta of it but it is yeah, a lot of fun don't talk like, about the talking about it yeah like like that's how fun is afterwards being like oh man like that mystic confluence when you the game like holy crap that card's so good and then you 
have a debate like, well, should it be in our cube? It should not. <laughs> Mr. Trump, that's so good. So good. It, it, we cut it a long time ago. And yeah, thank was... God, I hate that card. Fury Conflicts, too. And yeah. Righteous Conflicts, to be fair, is right on the border. Okay, yeah. let me tell you. That card yeah. has overperformed sometimes. <laughs> you think you draft a sick enchantment deck and you're like, oh, I have Sigil the Empty Throne and Eidolon Blossoms and Doom Egg Giant. Everything I cast so good. And then they're like, Righteous Conflicts, Exile All Three. And you're like, this game is so over. Is it? artifact or enchantment or is it just no it's just enchantment okay. if it was artifact enchantment we probably would have cut it already yeah but it's such a good like marginal answer card mm -hmm. and it works with so many things it works with tokens it works with life gain it works as an answer card it's just uh, and it goes in yeah. control it goes in everything it's so good um yeah and i think that's the, that's the fun in lots of cube i know like i'm not sure how many other like cube players and or designers talk about but what we love to do after a game is we try to figure out like either what decision was or what was the point in the game which like you started like it ended yeah it ended whereas like this was the what was the key card like was it like cast, a misplay yeah. or was it like when i casted this card like i i just got outvalued on it or i got so much value that that yeah. tipped me in the lead and i was able to or the, use that momentum to it's just something like uh like i've watched games um and it I, in particular one player in our play group does it mm -hmm. but i seem like he's really worried about cards and mm -hmm. like he's really early with his removal and I was like, that, like, there's been a game where, like, that game was lost because you cast that hero's downfall a turn too early, or two turns too early, mm -hmm. right? You should have set this up first and then gone for it, and then you would have won. And so it's like, it's not like it's just like, oh yeah, you casted a Karlov and they answered it and that was it. No, no, no. It's like sometimes it's something subtle. Like mm -hmm. you should have, you could have taken another hit, yeah. and you could have developed something more, and then you could have gone for the, mm -hmm. oh now I kill your thing, yeah, right. It's all or over sometimes the place. it's really simple, and it's like when I waste landed your bounce land, that was yeah, and then it was over. That yeah. was over. <laughs> yeah, or like I I got to eight yeah. mana and cast Ugin, yeah, and I minus, and there was nothing you could do about yeah. it. Or it's just like oh, it's like that one time you, you know, you tried to remove my creature, but I two for one you instead type thing, like that is lots of times as simple as that is the turning point, and yeah. and that's the fun part, and that's like when you're building these modules and you're trying to figure out like. You can have more to discuss about too, because you can talk about like, is this too good for this module? Oh, yeah, is this it's too it, good for the whole power level. Even of after the cube? you build it, you're gonna play with your playgroup. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a lot of input from your playgroup, especially after they change. Like after you do a couple times, the modules are all over the place and they keep changing. Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be a big learning gap too. Like there's a big, the players who are gonna be the best at card evaluation are gonna start winning more. Mm -hmm. And it's really gonna put roach your players to like understand card evaluation. And I'm I still say to this day I'm still amazed at how good our playgroup has gotten a card evaluation. And when they play a regular limited set that they've never played before, and they, they beat they players who are way yeah. more into it, I'm like always shocked yeah. that like man this has to come from the modular cube. Yeah. Um. And I think that like I honestly think we're not very we don't think we're very good magic players. We no. we we're, think we're mediocre. We're okay. We're mediocre to, compared to like in franchise really yeah. you know regular magic online players we're like in terms of limited probably, we're like middle of the pack yeah we're probably like we're yeah, very average. far away yeah, we're very from average silver pros yeah. right like we're not we're not there yeah, we're no, way closer no to means. average than we are to like we're pro. average of magic online yeah. not like if we go to a f uh to a lgs we're probably we, above we average tend to win yeah we tend to do really well but if we're playing magic, magic online, online we're about average yeah, yeah we hit you know i think my overall win percentage in the last uh match win percentage in the last uh, five draft environments is like 55 yeah mine's probably like 50 maybe just under it's it's no you probably above 50 yeah it's it's probably right at 50 yeah um yeah but i did do really well yeah. with rivals of Excel on yeah. that, that set yeah. was like 60 oh man i love that set i actually didn't it wasn't a very good format but for some reason i kept winning yeah. so uh and i kept getting free packs so i kept playing because i keep getting free yeah. packs so i want to use them all um, cause when you sell, I ended up with like six over and I sold them for like one tick. I was like, this is crap. <laughs> Thank God I burned through most of these. Um, uh, anyways, uh, so we're not very, but I think what we are really good is actually card evaluation. And I think our set reviews, like, I think we called a lot of, like, sometimes I'm shocked where people are like, for example, I think a great example is, um, Ooh, we're going to do one of those, uh, I'm going to branch our review for it. Yeah. So if I'm wrong about this, you guys will know. So it's going to be after the music. So you can stay tuned. Um, the two one with haste, with exalt, uh, not um, with uh, eternalized. What's his name? Kenra, something Kenra. Resilient? Uh, yeah, no, Earthshaker. Earthshaker. Earthshaker Kenra. Earthshaker Kenra. We were like, this card is good. We were fairly certain. Everyone dismissed it. And then it ended up like as a staple in the red aggro deck in standard. 
and no one called it and i'm like we were right on it okay well, that's my memory are. and i w- maybe we were hesitant i'm scared that we were hesitant in the set review but my memory of that card is like i like this card this card is gonna be good it's a 2-1 with haste for two and it has massive upside where it comes back as a 4-4 this is insane and it prevents your opponent from blocking, right? Yeah. Like, if you get six mana, you're going to get this a 4-4. Four, four. He's going to lose a blocker, and you're going to smack. Um, and for some reason, no one's on it, and I think we did it. So I think that that's the one thing, and I think that it's solely due to the modular cube is where our set, our card evaluation scales yeah. come from. Like, if we were massively wrong about an M19 card, I'd be shocked. If we were massively wrong, we could be a little wrong. We could we could have been, like, a little bit overhyped, right? Yeah. But I think we got it right. Like, I mean, maybe we're overly hyped on sarkin maybe but mm-hmm. you're overly his... hyped on that sarkin the, no the the bone dragon the one that for red when you cast a dragon you can pay red and bring it back oh my god gold you're, gold you're treasure. overhyped on that sick, one but it's would, gonna be sick in our module would you play bathe in dragon fire in your cube no because terrible yeah that is oh you ba- mean red oh wait 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 the... yeah because i keep getting back <laughs> you keep getting bro it back. if i get bathe right for once once <laughs> i get it back i'm in Bro, if you get another... No, once, you're good. Four damage to creature, and it's instant. Big thing, Dragonfire is Sorcerer. Oh, is it Sorcerer? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm already way better. Way better okay. than Big thing, Dragonfire. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's all thanks to Cube. As a last note, right? You're going to go You're gonna go home. Well, you're probably at home. Well, maybe you're, or you're at work, way work, home. Work. Yeah, that's true. It's a podcast. I'm at home. You're not at home. Um, who listens to podcasts at home? You do. I listen to podcasts at home? I'm guessing. Only when I'm cooking. Yeah. Yeah, because I have a little speaker. Highly recommend. If you're a podcast listener, get one of those little speakers. Yeah, little in Canada, cards. they're only $80 from Sony. Um, yeah, they're pretty cheap. So in the US, there's they're probably tons, $40. There's bucks. tons of little cheap speakers. Yeah, but get get a really get a decent one because, you know, you want you want to be able to hear what's coming out of it. Get a good one. It's probably 50 American dollars, maybe less. Um, highly recommend. Bluetooth. Syncs your phone. You're cooking, listening to the podcast, man. I like to do it when I'm, like, uh, folding laundry. I See, I have the little speaker. I just move around the house yeah. with the little speaker when I'm doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it's way better than headphones. Headphones get caught and stuff. If you have yeah. wireless headphones, then you're already way ahead. But then also, like, when I'm cooking, I need to listen, right? I don't yeah. want to, like, screw all up. All the senses. Yeah, exactly. It's cooking is a delicate process. I'm, yeah. Anyways, point is, uh, you're not listening at home. You're, you're, you're going to get home, and you're going to be like, hey, I'm going to start this massive task. You're going to start with your themes. One word of advice. Poisonous is a very big problem, Okay. So just to recap, okay, the broader the theme, the more overlap it will have with other modules. Think enchantment life gain, right? Though enchantments are everywhere, all cards. It's easy to stick enchantments all over the place. So enchantments will have a lot of synergies. Life gain too, right? There's plenty of good cards that aren't in the life gain modules that gain life. They're all over. Bow of Nylia, we just talked. Mm-hmm. Bow of Nylia gains life. Oh, cool. Um, oh, what, um, I can't think of another one right now. But um, artifact... Graveyard strats, token strats, all very good. They're all over the place. We have three graveyard modules. We have five artifact modules. We have two token modules. Everything creates a token. It's so easy to create the token, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Tribo is where it gets dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Humans, good. Yeah. Zombies, if you do it right, it's good. The way we do it now, I think it's getting better. I don't even think we're there yet, but I think it'll be a lot better once we tune it. But what I don't want you guys to do is to be like, you know what? I love Commander and playing Slivers. I'm going to make a Slivers module. Yeah. Because you know what goes good with Slivers? More Slivers. Slivers. <laughs> slivers. You, know what, you know what sucks with Slivers? Not Slivers. Yeah. Uh, those <laughs> so, are not good first modules. Like, humans, great tribal. You want to begin it with the tribal module? Humans, spirits. You know they say humans is, your, is yeah. your accidental tribal tribe in every, uh, yeah, cube. every cube. Yeah every cube yeah. yeah uh so that's a good place to start don't start with slivers or allies mm-hmm. um and then a big a b mechanics be wary yeah. that's heroic madness energy yeah for Ma- example with like madness when i talk about lupine prototype like i was talking about more of the general archetype of whole discarding and you know hellbent and madness all together as one package so you're not just like no this is all cards that are madness because that's not good enough that, yes. that gets too toxic. But if exactly. you say, like, you know, to put how, about, how about we'll put in Graveyard Matters cards, we'll put in Discard cards, and we'll put in the few Madness cards, and, like, anyone can pick and choose them, and it's not all Madness, so it's not all, like, I need to discard and have mana up to cost it. You can be like, I can discard it, get it back from my Graveyard later, and it's fine. Yep. You just don't want to go too, like you said, too deep into 
yeah a very small like theme uh to put in perspective our two madness modules they each have 40 cards or modules are 40 cards they only have i think eight madness cards each seven or eight something like that it's not very much mm -hmm. now we labeled them but you can call your your modules whatever you want right i always thought it, i i always wanted to come up with clever little names for it right but mm -hmm. like uh i guess i could but it's just easier to call it madness because yeah just right there in the title and then you know what you're talking about but like we could call it like no hands or yeah. something like that and then be like oh this isn't the no hands module and then it's like sh like you got to think about it but like right yeah um but it's just easier so we never end up doing um uh, and as a last note the most poisonous as you said slivers and storm stay away <laughs> stay away if you have storm currently in your cube it might not be a bad idea and you want to convert to just stop running storm Put those cards aside. Don't don't sell them. Just leave them in a quote in a box. You know, just they're there. Work on your other modules. Get good at it. Then bring Storm. Right? Storm was a super late addition for us. Our, we had several amazing, in like good modules that were in very good places before Storm came in. Yeah. Uh, same with Slivers. You know, we started with the stuff. We I knew. think Slivers should go. Oh I, no, I don't think so. I think Slivers. Look, there were some changes. Five changes in Slivers. Really. I think solidified slivers, and I think slivers have their place. I think I I think right, that it's well. Good. We'll re revisit this and, in, that, uh, in a future episode. As a tease, next week's topic will be about storm, not in modular cubes, just storms in cubes, and yeah. storms and cubes. You know, we, we don't do many modular cube episodes, but we thought that you know, with uh, Black Fishy's request, yeah, and I think he had a good point. We just for some reason we never did how, how to, to build them. one, yeah, and I hope we didn't go too long. We probably did. We probably did. If we did, well, you're welcome. Yep. You're probably cooking anyways, listening to your little Sony yep. speaker because you're way ahead of me. But if you're not, get on it and uh, listen to it from your way home from work. For some reason, I'm moving your show notes even though we're done. I don't have to nice. flip pages. Yeah. I, think, I, think we're, I think we're reaching the end. We are reaching the end. So uh, until next week, happy cubing. Peace. Two one haste for two is it's, not it's, very good. It's not very good. It's playable. It's not it great. Is. Haste is in aggressive decks. Haste could be more valuable yep. than first strike. Mm -hmm. But what I'm interested in is the other ability, right? The Eternalize for six creature mana. Creature camp lock Who with power less. Exactly. Man, that's a lot of the time they're gonna have two power things, right? Yeah. Um. It. It's really good against. Yeah, walls. it's less than or equal to, so which is good. It's not just less. Yeah, so it's yeah. two or less, right? Yeah. So, so you can... you're gonna get. I think you're gonna get so much value, man. Mm -hmm. you, maybe you don't cast this on turn two, but I feel like this card's gonna do a lot of damage. And if for some reason your deck stalls out, like obviously this is going to a very aggressive red deck, right? Mm -hmm. If your deck stalls out and you accidentally get to six mana, you get a four four with haste that prevents a four power creature or less from blocking. Yeah. That seems good. Definitely. I mean, I, I think you can ignore that most of the time. Yeah, I think, I think most of the time like, you're playing it for its yeah, actual it's just, cost. Yeah, and then it's, it's just still a bonus, right? Mm -hmm. It's no Goblin Guide, but I mean, it's attacks on the same turn as Fire Drinker Seder. Yeah. And Fire Drinker Seder I really like. Yeah. So if you want to push Red Weenies, maybe this card is not as good. I I mean, maybe it only finds in like large or huge cubes just because there's better one drops. Like the a card that I'm sad that we haven't tried out yet. Just because it hasn't come up, the prowess, any source of spell that like it's oh source of makes damage. minus one minus one. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Scar scab scar soul scab. mage or something. Scar, scar soul mage, yeah. Yeah. So maybe those cards are better, but you know, I I think I think I think this guy's good. I I'd give it a go, uh, if you have a big cube. Got to be a big cube. Mm-hmm.